Wanna Leave works all day, so I can keep working my magic. Just Wanna Leave, 12 hours of uninterrupted pain relief. Aleve, who do you take it for? And for fast topical pain relief, try Aleve X. At Quick Trip, there's a world of refreshing possibilities at your fingertips. Fountain, fresh fruit, or frozen? The only question is, what will you pour first? QT, more than a gas station. Welcome back to Brazzle. Connor Madison gets the start here. A little bit of a surprise start. He threw on Sunday. He's the Sunday guy for the Lopes, but you see his numbers pretty good. Had a rough outing on Sunday. They're trying to get him back on track, so we'll see how long he goes. Little change as well his battery made as we take a look at the defense for GSU behind Madison. John Sheehan back behind home plate. Wilson, Verduzco, Pelk in right, and then uh, Peyton, Neville, Crenshaw, and Aikeny around the horn. Um, We'll keep an eye on Cooper Neville. First start as a shortstop there. And Bo Ankeny had started a DH. Hits his first start in his career out in the field. Quickly, let's take a look at the batting order for Oregon. The Ducks make a few little changes, but it's still the same guys. Casella, Neville, Smith, Hurd, Arrows, Walsh, Cooney, Meggers gets to start behind home plate uh, in for Thompson and Garate. Take a look at uh, that guy at first base, Walsh. He came in and pinch hit last night, hit a two-run bomb. He is now tied for fourth in career home runs with Oregon. So they got some power. It'll behoove Madison to get these guys out early in the order. First pitch, hit deep, and uh, what do we say about power? One pitch, one nothing Ducks. Yikes. <laughs> wow. It is so funny that that just happened because we were just talking about how they have been swinging early on these first pitches, and the first of the game goes yard. Well, the Lopes wanted Madison to get some innings here, maybe just one inning and get some confidence back. Not that this kid ever doesn't uh, have confidence, but... Uh, Man, Casella was sitting on a fastball. He got it and gave it a ride. <coughs> That'll bring up Neville. We'll see how Madison responds. First pitch in there, strike one to Neville. Neville hitting 200 on the season. That pitch just misses outside. Count goes to one and one. And when we say they want to get him a little more confidence, Look, Connor Madison is one of those confident kids we've had here at GCU as he misses that one. It's more about kind of getting him back into a rhythm, only through two innings on Sunday. So they want to kind of get him back into his rhythm. Got a little flustered down there first time on the road. Especially as a freshman, too. Great slider on the outside corner count goes to two and two. I mean, high hopes for this kid. He is not disappointed early on. Working quickly, the 2-2 two -two to Neville. Fouled it off. So we would expect, I mean, never know exactly what Greg Wallace and Nathan Bannister are thinking, but we'd expect one inning and done, maybe two innings, because you do want to start this kid on Sunday down at Stephen F. Austin. For sure. The 2-2, two -two, fouled back again. Well, he's getting him in there quick. He is pacing himself, but at a little bit of a higher speed. Yeah, the pitch clock, in effect, in NCAA baseball last year and this year. Swing and a miss. Pulled the string on that one. So he bounces back from the leadoff home run on the first pitch of the game by Casella with a strike out of Neville. Not a bad way to recover. For sure. I mean, after a first, first pitch bomb, that's going to definitely maybe knock your confidence off a bit. But, you know, coming right back, getting a strikeout early on, good for the future. Drew Smith at the plate. Well, that, that fastball that was hit out of the park by Casella caught way too much of the plate, trying to maybe sneak one by him. On that last at bat, a couple of sliders that had Neville fooled. That last one was a beaut. 1-0 to Smith. Smith squares to bunt. Count goes to 2-0. and Smith hitting uh, 342 on the year. One homer, eight RBI. The 2-0. That one ripped into center. Verdusco going back. Looks like he has a bead on it and makes the grab two down. Well, if Connor Madison can work through Jeffrey Hurd, which is no uh, small ask, it'd be a fantastic recovery after the leadoff homer. Definitely. I mean, Jeffrey Hurd is, if you didn't watch, if you didn't catch last game, folks, <laughs> I mean, 
Go back and watch that because this man was lighting it up. Well, he's hitting 432. He started, uh, you know, all 12 games this year now. He's got 19 hits in 44 at-bats. And Hurd with two homers, 11 RBI. He's got six doubles. So of those 19 hits, he's got nine extra base hits. Ahead in the count, one ball, no strikes. Pulled the string on that one. So right now it looks like that off-speed pitch, the slider, is the best pitch for Madison. Connor working quickly. Swing and a miss. Another one down low. One and two. Well, if they can time your fastball, go off speed. And doing it beautifully here. Yeah, try to catch him outside again. Paint that square. Ground ball up the middle and through. This guy is tough to get out this year. Heard aboard, extends the inning. It was all thanks to that number two pencil bat of his. <laughs> very, very clever design. Got to hand it to him. Yeah, Oregon, the Ducks, known for their designs on everything they do. Uniforms, the bat, very clever. That'll bring up Anson Arrows. Arrows in right field today, played first base yesterday. Swing and a miss, strike one. Heard now, that's his 20th hit of the season. Wow. 20 hits in 11 games. Tip my hat. Unbelievable. We remember him as he takes his lead at first. Throw over. He played right field, center field for Sacramento State last year. Might have played two years. I remember him thinking he was a really good-looking ball player. Looks like he's hit the weight room a bit here. Fall ball through at Oregon. The 0-1 in there for a strike with the fastball at 91. 0-2. Heard one for two in stolen base attempts. Not the count to run on here, but let's see if he wants to go. 0-2 pitch. Taking his time in the dirt. Blocked nicely by Sheehan. One and two. He is creeping out there. He wants Madison to look his way. <coughs> well, you know, with this pitch clock, it's down to 16 now. Got to get on the mound. If you get on the mound right at 20 when it starts, you can freeze the running game just by holding the ball all the way down to about five seconds. Yeah. You still got time to do that, but now you got to go with three seconds on the pitch clock. Takes a look, and now he's going to throw over, and it hits Hurd, and it's going to bounce out of play. So you're right. Hurd was causing him trouble, and Madison tried to pick him, hit him down to second base. Yeah, I think what, he, I think what Madison actually noticed is he looked back at the pitch clock. You know, if we can... Maybe scrub that one a little farther back. But he looks back at the pitch clock, and he notices 2-1, and he has to panic throw to first, and that's what causes that. Yeah, he took some time walking around the mound before getting on the mound, and so by the time he got on, it was about at about 15, 14. So now runner in scoring position, 1-2 count on arrows. The pitch missed outside 2-2. Two and two. So now a base hit would give another run to the Ducks. They got there first if you... Joined us, I don't know, five seconds late. You missed <laughs> the leadoff homer by Casella. Seriously. That was on the first pitch of the ball game, and it was a no-doubter. The 2-2. Two -two. Ooh, boy. That one didn't miss by much. No. Nope. One of those that was close to being a called third strike. Not sure how Arrows laid off that. 3-2 pitch. Two outs. Man on second. That one ripped into right. See if they're going to try to hold. Now they're going to hold Hurd, but he runs through the stop sign. The throw is going to be in time to get him. Hurd thinks he got the hand in there. He might have, but boy, what a throw by Pelf. Sheehan blocking the plate. Take a look as we head to break. Rips it fair, sends it home. That is close for sure. We'll be right back. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. Come on now. Just a 
hustling. I'm never gonna stop, keep climbing to the top. Yeah, I'm crushing it, crushing it. Finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. First collegiate start for Jacob Walsh, or excuse me, Colin Clark on the mound here, the righty. And uh, Colin out of Irvine, he's going to get the start here as a freshman. And thanks to uh, his uh, left fielder, Justin Casella, he's up one nothing. Let's take a look at the defense behind Colin Clark. He's got uh, Chase Meggers is behind on plate. Casella, Neville, and Arrows in the outfield. Garate, Cooney, Smith, and Walsh around the horn on the infield. Take a look real quickly at the uh, Lopes batting order facing this first-time freshman uh, starter. And GCU, a couple of little changes in the batting order. Nothing major, though. Crenshaw, Verdusco, York. Ankeny, Wilson, Payton, Eddie Pelk out there in right. Came up big defensively uh, a moment ago. Sheehan behind on plate. And Cooper Neville gets his first start. Greg Wallace, of course, in his 11th season with the Lopes second as the skipper. See if Crenshaw can keep things going. Leadoff man hitting ball really well. It takes ball one. Crenshaw in the ball game yesterday had two of the Lopes six base hits. He had a double in the third and a single in the eighth. And Dustin comes in hitting 400 on the year. And that would have been great if he would have swung on the first one too. <laughs> Goes after the second one, but... Doesn't have the length that Casella did. Pops that one into shallow right field coming in as Arrows, who makes the grab one down. Well, this easily could be a 2-0 ball game with uh, Oregon still going as we see the replay of the pop-up into right. Eddie Pelk made a great throw and a bang-bang play at the plate. Got Jeffrey Hurd, who ran through a stop sign to end that uh, first inning. We looked at the replay, and boy, it was close. He might have got a hand in there, Hurd. Call, though, stayed without, and the Lopes retired the side. Just down one nothing as Verdusco steps in. First pitch, fouled off right side. Is that going to stay in play? Walsh coming over, and it hits the screen. Walsh can't grab it. He almost had it, actually. It was just off of that net right there. Close yeah, Walsh play. tracked it pretty well. He was the only one that had a chance to get to it. Verdusco. Having a nice year, hitting 362. But as we said, the Lopes only got six hits in the ball game yesterday. Verdusco didn't get one of them. He was 0 for 2. Chopper, that's going to be a tough play. Garate is going to cut it off. Throws in the dirt, gets past Walsh. But that would have been a bang-bang play either way. So, see, so yeah, they'll probably do an infield single on that one. Garate had to go that direction on it. No chance if that ball goes to the shortstop, Cooney. Had to wait on the hop. Yeah, and you have to actually Fires think low. Chase Meggers right there. He was ready for that. He knew that that skipper was going to give the first baseman a little bit of trouble trying to field that. So Verduce go on with the base hit single. Zach York at the plate. DH today ripped into right field going back. His arrows looks up. Gone. There you go, kid. Lopes take the lead. Two to one on a bomb by York, his second of this midweek series. Zach York doing what he does best. Puts him up 2-1. And we have been seeing, and I'm gonna have to check my stat sheet, how many home runs in this two game series have we seen? We've been people seeing people hitting bombs. Well, Ankeny steps in. He leads the team with five home runs. But now York up to four. York hit one yesterday. First pitch in there for a strike. <coughs> Good to see Zach York had been scuffling a bit from a batting average standpoint. No scuffling there. First pitch, sent it out of the park. 0-1 to Ankeny, fouls it off. It's 0-2. Well, we talked about it last night with Braden Dorman. We saw the home runs last night, but the ball travels better during the day here. It really and does. And we've already seen that, right? 
Yes, we have. I, I thought Yorks was going to be off the wall, but boy, he put put some power into it. That's a pretty good drive in the right center field going over his arrows. Can he run it down? He can't. One hops the wall. Ankeny is going to cruise in with a stand-up double. Look at this. Some offensive firepower from the Lopes after giving up a quick run solo shot. This is what you want. You know, we talked about it. One of our keys of the game was they're five and six so far when they score well within the third, the first three innings. And with extra base hits and everything going with their, their way right now, hopefully they can take at least this one game against them. Tyler Wilson at the plate now with Ankeny at second, ripped down the line but foul. And this is something the Lopes weren't quite sure what they were going to get out of Bo Ankeny. I mean, didn't play at all much or much his freshman year, didn't play the sophomore year. And comes in here, did well in fall ball, gets the starts at DH. Because that one misses inside, one and one to Tyler Wilson. But boy, it, it, he's been huge because somebody like that, with his power and the way he's hitting the ball now, hitting behind York, a huge benefit for GCU in that middle of the order. Wilson as well. Chopper to short. One play over to first in time. Runner moves up. Good base running there by Ankeny. That ball was behind him, so he was able to take third on it. Yeah, just a nice little sacrifice ground out. Move a runner up. Give Eli a chance to put another on the board for the Lopes. Lopes looking for a two-out base knock. Peyton had a homer last night. He was one for three with that two-run shot. His first dead bat in the second. I thought Eli, even, even though he, he walked once, had that homer, lined out to right and flew out to right, thought he had some really good at bats. One and one. Eli hitting 235 on the year. Does that have two home runs and six RBI? Base knock would give him a seventh RBI. Swings through an off-speed pitch, one and two. He's got to watch these next one carefully. Good to see this response by the Lopes, though, after the leadoff bomb by Casella. And then the bang-bang play at the plate to get heard, and it looks like they are warming up a new pitcher for the second inning here. Is that Webb out there, the left-hander? Two and two. Yeah, it looks like uh, David Case might be coming in. The pitch, swing and a miss, got him. So the strikeout ends the inning, but the two-run bomb by York makes it a 2-1 ball game. GCU leads it as we head to the second. New pitcher coming on the bump for the Lopes. We'll tell you all about it when we come back to Brazil. Feeling uneasy about your financial future? You need a partner that helps lighten the load. Welcome to Global Credit Union. It means early payday, your paycheck up to three days early with direct deposit, accounts with no NSF fees, and a mobile app with tools to help you manage your family budget. At Global, we take member care seriously, with branches near you and a 24-7 U.S.-based call center staffed by real people. Join us at Global Credit Union. Culver's couldn't have started anywhere but in Sauk City, Wisconsin. Still today, we are a family restaurant. Here, nearby farms grow the food we eat, smiles are contagious, and everyone is someone's neighbor. It's a place where our love of fresh food is as strong as our love for each other. It's a feeling of welcome you'll notice the moment you stop by. Because where we come from has made us who we are. And for that, we couldn't be more proud. Welcome to Delicious. New pitcher on the mound for the Lopes as we head to the second with GCU leading two to one. Number 21, David Case, the six foot junior out of Pasadena, California. Yeah, right now he's leading the team. Unfortunately, not a great thing you want to be leading at in ERA right now, but you know, only three innings pitched. That's what happens. You know, things, numbers like that get a little higher, but they will slim down as the season goes on. So we'll see what David can bring to the plate. The mound yeah. actually today. Three innings pitched, three hits, four runs all earned, three walks, four strikeouts. For Madison, it was all by design, just one inning. 
greeted by the solo shot and then a two out single by her a great play defensively by Pelk to Sheehan to cut down her trying to score. Madison's numbers, three hits, one run, it was earned. He walked no one, struck out one, faced five batters, threw 20 pitches. And as uh, Walsh, Cooney, and Meggers check in for the Ducks, really, I mean, other than the solo homer, not a bad outing. Definitely not. For Madison, no. right? Something he'll definitely, you know, look at, you know, reviewing his quick inning today, post game, in the near future. You know, they've got one day off, and then they go over to SFA, obviously. So we'll see if he can, you know, recuperate, find his rhythm again, and perform. Jacob Walsh, one on one the count. Jacob Walsh came in as a pinch hitter. Don't see a lot of times you pull your number three hole hitter for a pinch hitter. They did it last night in the ninth, and he had a two run bomb. His uh, 25th all time as that one misses inside. I was talking to the folks over from the Ducks, and uh, they said now Walsh. Tied for fourth all-time. 31 is the record for all-time homers. I would think he's going to pass that this year. Big swing there, two and two. Just six away. Two-two pitch to Walsh. Tight. Count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Walsh Ooh. hitting 308 with those three home runs. Yeah, I think that he can reach that number. That's a feasible number for yeah. him. The 3 2. Chopped that one foul. He's also atop the leaderboard in uh, career doubles. Ninth in career doubles with 33. Talk about the Lopes middle of the lineup. They got a good middle of the order as well. Jammed him. Going to be a tough play for Case. Fires in time to get his man. <laughs> Got to field your position in case does it perfectly here. Didn't rush it. Got his feet under him. Fired a strike. Yeah, he pivoted nicely off of that back foot. And that's what you get with, you know, a fielding option into the left half of the infield. Is he can turn nicely with momentum, with power especially picking that out up right there. In the air to right, hit pretty well. If it's fair, it's going to be trouble. Pelt goes back, and we're tied at two as Cooney goes oppo. The freshman shortstop goes yard, his third home run of the year, and just like that, we said it's going to fly here today, and it's flying. Yeah, there's not a lot of wind going on, and... Not a lot of restriction in the air, so we could see a lot more than what we've already seen in the past two innings, in the past nine Inning and innings. A half, yeah, three home seriously. runs, right? I mean, wow. I mean, he got he hit that pretty well, but that was Oppo, and that thing just flew as Chase Meggers steps up to the plate. Yeah. Meggers going to bunt, and a perfect drag bunt, no play for Neville. Wow. I mean, he just. We saw Garate do that in the game last night. Did, That's indeed. a bunt that if you can just get it past the pitcher. It's no man's land Look at out there. How much power he actually has on this too, surprisingly. Yeah, he was trying all the way to push that past case, and once it got past him, I mean, there's there's nobody to field that ball. Indeed. See if Lopes can turn two here. Garate at the plate, hitting 405. He is a tough guy to turn two on, very quick. Swing and a miss. We were talking last night about how good Carter. Garate looks as a sophomore lefty playing third base, but as a nine-hole hitter, choking up on the bat a bit, just trying to create some havoc down low in that order and get on base. He got on base three times. Ball gets away. Count goes to one and one, but he got singled in the third last night and scored, singled in the sixth, singled in the eighth. He was three for four from the nine-hole spot. Yeah, up and coming. He's got a couple more years left. Definitely something Oregon wants to remain with. Yeah, they got some good young players on that infield. Square into bunt, up high. Count goes to two and one. I mean, you look around um, the starters here. Neville in center's a sophomore. Smith at second's a sophomore. Arrows, who's played right and first base, a sophomore. Cooney, who had that home run and the shortstop, he's a freshman. Meggers is a sophomore. Garate is a sophomore. Throw over, runner back. So they got a good young group of uh, hitters who are 
who are hitting well and fielding well. It'll be interesting to see how their weekend rotation is. We're seeing their midweek rotation. Yeah. There goes the runner. Good jump. The throw from Sheehan. And he got him. One hopped it right on the back. Beautiful pick and tag by Neville. And John Sheehan guns down Meggers for the second out of the inning. I couldn't catch that, but was that pitch a little in the dirt, too, and he managed to field that? I mean, maybe we'll get another Yeah, it was low. It. He might have picked it before the throw. I mean, textbook. you got to be smiling a little bit if you're Greg Wallace. 2-2 two -two pitch. Popped him up, foul out of play. Neville did a nice job to pick that and drop the tag right down. So Sheehan coming up with a couple of big plays each inning. The 2-2. Down the line, and it's going to go foul. He had the great uh, waited on that throw from Pelk. Snagged it on the one hop and tagged out Hurd for the last out of the inning in the first inning. And there, throwing out the uh, attempted base stealer Meggers. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two, two ball game. The pitch. In the air to center, Redusco, as it measured, makes the grab. The solo homer makes it 2-2, but a beautiful play by Sheehan on the steal. Down low, backhands, fires a strike down to second. Parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. Make me go loco, loco. Make me go loco. Two-two ball game as we head to the bottom of the second. Bottom third of the order, Pelk, Sheehan, and Neville do up for GCU. And we got four runs in this one, two for each team. All have been scored by homers. Solo shot by Casella, solo shot by Cooney for Oregon. Two-run shot by York, bringing Verdusco home. So... It's a home run derby day here it at is. Brazzle. I was actually going to bring that up. You know, I think we might be, you know, what if, what if you just had some of these college players just come out here and just start <laughs> swinging and see how many they can get in a certain amount of time? Man, I'd love to see that. Fouled straight back by Pelk. Count goes to 1-1. One one. Pelk was the starter in right field early on. Diaz got some ABs down at UTSA and hit well, so he took over the starting. Last couple of games, Pelk back in there and right tonight. Pops that one up, fouling out of play. Count goes to one ball and two strikes. Eddie, though, starting off really well for the Lopes, hitting 324 with no homers but three RBI. That'll tell you how hot Diaz was when you can lose your starting spot for a few games and you're hitting 324. Yeah, really it is. Shot up the middle. That batting average is going to go up. Pelk, a leadoff base knock for the Lopes. Well, that's nice to have. You got two guys that can play the outfield that can hit like that. Just staying back, taking it right back up through the box. Then I'll bring up John Sheehan. Sheehan really scuffling at the plate. He's still looking for his first base hit. 0 for 16 to start this season. We'll see if the Lopes want to put a bunt on. Garate down at third thinks they're going to do it. Squaring the bunt already. So he pushes it to first. That's going to get the job done. Walsh, instead of tagging him, just runs right back to the bag. But... Beautiful sacrifice by Sheehan in the go-ahead run in scoring position for Cooper Neville, the freshman shortstop in his first start of his GCU career. As you see Sheehan. Yeah, and you know, 0 for, 0 for 17 might sound like a like a hit to the soul, but when you think about it like that, you know, sacrifice bunts, that's what actually counts to help, to help your team get wins under your belt. 
Neville goes after the first pitch, fouls it off Garate. Coming back, does he have room? That's Bindem back towards him, and he makes the grab. We didn't even have a chance to talk about Cooper Neville much. That's a nice play down there at third. That ball was bending back towards him off the bat, and he stuck with it. It really was. You know, there's, there's clouds out today, but watching that ball, yeah, he definitely was bending over a little backwards trying to get that, and he does field it very nicely. Well done. Top of the order, Dustin Crenshaw flew out to right in the first inning. Lopes going to need a two-out base knock. First pitch in there, strike one. Dustin hitting 392 on the year, up high. One and one. Pelk with good speed. Any type of base hit out of the infield with two outs should score the run. Chop foul. One ball, two strikes to count. Oregon has scored in both innings, two solo shots in each of the first two innings. Lopes trying to answer here in the second after the two-run homer in the first by York, the one-two. Laid on that one, fooled him, and he tried to make a swing just to foul it off and stay alive, couldn't do it. No runs on one hit there, no errors, and a man left on. We've completed two, two-two ball game here at Brazel. Finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Beautiful day here at Brazel. As we head to the third, a 2-2 ball game. Top of the order, Casella, Neville, and Smith do up for the Ducks. Both these teams starting conference play, uh, the Ducks hanging out in uh, Arizona. I'm not sure where they're staying, but probably the same spot as they head over to Tempe and uh, get three with Arizona State to start Pac-12 play. Lopes have to get on a plane tomorrow and fly down and play Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, a little bit of a Arizona vacation, you might say. No, it's not really a vacation, but <laughs> they're definitely out here enjoying the sun as the weather just starts to get perfect. Yeah, I'm sure their fans had this one circled. Hey, let's head down to Arizona and catch five games in, you know, six days. It really has been a kind of a tourist site lately. I feel like I've been seeing a lot. Casella did not offer. Ball one. That is only the second pitch of the day that Casella has seen. Indeed. He took the first pitch over the right field wall for a solo shot against Connor Madison to start this game. Rips that one into left. He's got a two-hit day going. Bounces it off the wall. Throw comes into third, so a leadoff double. So two hits, two extra base hits, and just like that, the Ducks got something rolling here in the third. Only three pitches? Wow. Casella is making his name known today. Yeah, if you like what you see, might as well go after it. He was two for four yesterday, so, or, yeah, two for four with the walk. So he's been doing exactly what you want from a leadoff man, and Mason DeVille at the plate. He struck out in the first inning. He still likes, hitting a buck 90 on the year. He likes that Arizona, that Arizona temperature, and he's going to be here for a little longer. Going to have to tune into those Arizona games, see if he just plays as well as he is here. Quick throw back on the back pick. Neville couldn't hang on to it. think he was safe anyways. Oh, one count to Neville. Just missed the outside part of the plate. One, two, 
Count evens at one apiece. That one blocked nicely there by Sheehan. Count goes, though, to two and one on DeVille. Smith on deck, heard in the hole. Well, David Case back on the bump, coming in in that second inning to replace Connor Madison. Fouled off. Count goes to two and two. And Case out of uh, Pasadena, California, Loyola High School, went to Oregon State, pitched a couple games for the Beavs in 2022, and worked with uh, former GSU pitching coach Rich Dorman up there at Oregon State. The 2-2. Two -two. Checked his swing. Did he go? Oh, Sheehan tags him out just in case. Jason Rogers says he did not. We got A.J. Lestaglio behind home place, Travis Egert down at first, and Jason Rogers down at third. Eggert is actually now more, more closer to second base now with those three umpires doing the shift with the left-handed batter up. 3-2 pitch. Not a chance. Runners at first and second now after the walk. So leadoff double to Casella. The walk to Neville and Drew Smith coming into play. We'll see. I mean, this is number three hole batter. We'll see if they want to play some small ball here and move two into scoring position for Hurd and Arrows. Yeah, they don't have any outs yet. See if that number two pencil can do what it does best and, uh, you know, put some scores in even more running position. Maybe get one in here, too. You never get used to that number two pencil never bat. Never do. It's very, very clever. <laughs> Up high, ball one. I'm a little naive. I, maybe I think that in a perfect world it can be used as both and that the eraser on the top of it could also erase you know, errors and things like that for the Oregon team. <laughs> yeah, or maybe you could just, like, put it down on the plate and, like, it would erase any marks on the plate right. or whatever. Erase the, the, the <laughs> box and maybe make it a little bigger. 1-0 <laughs> pitch. Misses down low 2-0. So now Case getting himself into a bit of a jam here. David, after Oregon State, went to El Camino College and then transferred in for his third collegiate season here at GCU. 2-0 pitch, 3-0. So the leadoff double, a walk. And, man, you go back-to-back -back walks here. You load the bases for Hurd, and you are really giving yourself no room for error. That is a dangerous, dangerous player coming up to bat. The lefty delivers in there for a strike, 3-1. and one. I mean, ideally, you'd strike out. Smith and then get heard to ground into an ending ending double play. I mean, that's how you draw it up, right? That is exactly <laughs> how you draw it up. I wouldn't want it any other way. How you design it. The 3 1. Chop foul, 3 and 2. So we're closer here. Now, if you're a Ducks fan, you design it that ball four to Drew Smith and then Hurd <laughs> hits a grand slam, right? That's exactly <laughs> that's what, what I wanted to see. Say. If yeah. you're rooting for Oregon. I'm kind of almost wanting to see it up here, too. You know, you don't have to see grand slams. The payoff pitch. Ground ball to short. Could be two here. Neville to Crenshaw. Back to Ankeny and the twin killing. Two down. Runner moves up to third. Well, you didn't get the strikeout in the double play, but we'll take the double play anytime you can. Pitcher's mm -hmm. best friend right there. And Hurd comes up with a man on third and two outs. That was a great pitching job by Case. I mean, he was down in that count. Three balls, no strikes, battled back. Didn't just throw a gopher ball either. Threw pitches that were tough to hit. Nice block there by Sheehan. Ball one. We saw last night, Alden Geiselman had some trouble blocking those balls in the dirt. Already Sheehan, by my just recollection, has had to block four or five in the dirt. He's done a nice job with it. Runner at third, Casella getting about halfway down the line. Swing and a miss. Big cut there. He was going for the two-run bomb. Heard base hit single with two outs in the first and then was gunned down by Eddie Pelk trying to score on a uh, sharply hit ball into right field. He questioned the call at the plate, but it stood. Popped up, foul. Sheehan's going to go back and look at it. That's going to get out of play, and oh, 
Nice and close. Yeah. Who got it? Somebody catch that or did he just, I didn't even hear it bounce. Did he make the grab? I don't know. I think it landed in the back of the seat of a Man, fan in nothing. front of him. One, two, the count. Souvenir time. Little chopper, Neville's gonna have to hurry. Hustles in, fields, throws, gets his man. Cooper Neville, the freshman, flash in the leather. And the Lopes get out of the leadoff double. No runs on one hit. No errors and a man left on. The double play helped out. 2-2 Two -two ball game, so we head to the bottom of the third. This is the most excited Lisa has ever been to get a car wash. And why shouldn't she be? Superstar is known as the number one car wash for quality. Lisa's confidence is soaring because Superstar's ceramic sealant is the best in the ceramic sealant game. Mmm, just look at those suds. No amount of dirt and debris can take away from the sparkling shine of her mom mobile. Lisa loves Superstar Car Wash so much that she signed up for the monthly plan to get unlimited washes. And you should, too. Visit SuperstarCarWash.com today. Across the feet of desert to where the mountains touch the sky. This is Sanderson Ford Country, where Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford Country, built on serving you. Sanderson Ford. Two two ball game as we head to the bottom of the third. It'll be Verdusco, York, and Ankeny do up for the Lopes. Every run scoring on a home run. Two solo shots by Oregon and a two run shot by Zach York. See if they can do it again. Verdusco got a base hit single, and York took the first, took the first pitch he saw for a two-run shot, and they're set up to do it again here as Verdusco takes strike one. Cade hitting 375 on the year. In the air, foul and out of play. Cade, a long line of great center fielders for GCU. Of course, he played right field last year for the Lopes. Homer Bush Jr. was in right or in center, excuse me, at the last year. Before that, Brock Burton, Preston Pavlika, Thomas LaRouge. Some really good center fielders. That one just misses for GCU over the years. And Cade keeping that going here this year as a center fielder. Ripped into left. That's going to get down. Second base hit of the day for Verdusco. Kate had to leg one out. It is first AB, no doubter on that one, and that'll bring up Zach York. Yeah, Zach York had that early bomb in the first. I'd love to see another one here. I'm not gonna lie. One pitch, two run shot. We'll see what Clark gives him here. You think you're gonna waste one, probably. Verduzco though. Good speed, not going, first pitch down low. And yeah, he didn't want to groove him one again. <laughs> want to know the count to Zach York. York hitting 237, does have those four home runs. Another would tie him with Bo Ankeny for the team lead. And Bo is on deck. Throw over the runner back. Verduzco two for two in stolen bases. Lopes don't steal a lot. Only attempted five times, been successful four of those five. Verdusco's got two of them. Outside corner. One and one. York having one of the best freshman seasons in GCU history. All whack team and a freshman All-American. Got under that one. Shallow, though. Going out is Smith. He's got it measured, makes the grab, and York is retired for the first out of the inning. Scott, a little bit under it right there. Yep, knew he missed it. Had a good swing at it. It's almost like he got it off the, uh, kind of close to the hands on the yeah. bat too. But give props where it's due. Drew Smith pulling that one in, putting one out on the board. That one ripped down the line. If it's fair, it's extra. It's fair ball. Verdusco, round second. 
coming up. They're going to try to score him. Going to take a great throw at the plate, and they get him. Beautiful relay throw gets Verduzco. It was a late wheel by Greg Wallace. You'll see him, but a double down the line. Beautiful defense by the Ducks. You'll see the late turn by Greg Wallace. The throw to the plate beats him, and the tag is there. So instead of second and third and one out, you've got man on second and two outs. That'll bring up Tyler Wilson. Well, surprisingly, it's actually a little bit. Oh. In the air to right, deep. Did he get it? He does. Tyler Wilson, two-run shot. All runs have scored via the home run in this ball game, and the Lopes lead it four to two. Oh, baby. Pardon me, Tyler, for interrupting you while you were going yard right there. Well, a beautiful play defensively by the Ducks. Keeps one off the board, but Wilson says, ah, to a base knock. How about that? I'll just take it out of the yard. And boy, he does. So first pitch swings have been the storyline <laughs> right? so far in these two games that these two teams have played against each other here. Peyton at the plate now. Ball skips past. So as I was saying, at the at the plate with the tag for Verduzco, Garade actually you have to give him the credit because if he doesn't field that low, that ball is not going to reach home in time, and it does because of him. Yeah, beautiful relay. Nicely done by Casella out there and left and Garade to Meggers, but just like that, one swing of the bat, and Wilson wipes away all those good feelings. 4-2 Lopes. Ground ball right side. Smith on the outfield grass. Ends the inning. But the Lopes score a, two runs on three hits. There are no errors and nobody left on base. The big shot, the two-run shot by Tyler Wilson. 4-2 Lopes as we head to the fourth. The home run derby continues at Brazil. Finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. At Quick Trip, there's a world of refreshing possibilities at your fingertips. Fountain, fresh brewed or frozen? The only question is, what will you pour first? QT, more than a gas station. I'm partnering with SoFi because they care about making your money work for your ambitions. Recognize a generational player. Join the official bank of the NBA. SoFi, get your money right. Hi, yesterday. Yeah. So five home runs yesterday, three by the Ducks, two by the Lopes. And now already four home runs in this one, two by each team. The difference is solo shots by the Ducks, two run shots by the Lopes, 4-2 GCU. I mean, I, I, my jaw's on the floor right now. This is amazing. I mean, you have to give credit to where credit's due. The hitting coaches and everything on both teams are, you know, doing their jobs. And you have to look at the other side, pitching coaches, you know, you have to make sure that you're preparing your players. But both teams swinging very well and honestly off of good pitches too. So, you know, give credit where credit is due. Both both teams are giving us a show today. David Case back on the bump for GCU. He'll face Arrows, Walsh, and Cooney. It's kind of like the difference be between shooting a, a three-pointer and a two-pointer. Both teams really making is. their shots, but the Lopes just have runners on with their home runs. And Lopes pitching has done just enough when there have been runners on base. To avoid those long balls, that pitch misses away. 1-0, Arrows had a base hit single in the first. Would have had an RBI, but Hurd was thrown out at the plate trying to score. That ended the inning. 2-0. Case had a little bit of trouble last inning pitching behind guys, but was bailed out by the 6-4-3 double play with nobody out and runners at first and second. 2-0 pitch, ground ball down the... Third baseline foul. Two and one. Good hustle from the ball boy out there. Getting 
getting them steps in. I need my steps in today. <laughs> Jumped on it quickly. Did indeed. Two one pitch to Arrows. Lays off of it. Three and one. <laughs> Arrows hitting 500 on the season. He's hitting the ball so well, they're just finding a spot for him defensively. The three one and he walks. He started at first base yesterday, right field today. He's on for the second time today. Leadoff man aboard for the third time in uh, four innings for the Ducks. And that'll bring up Jacob Walsh. And Jacob Walsh, one of those guys who is in scoring position the minute he steps into the batter's box. Yeah. Doesn't have to be on second base to be no. in scoring position. He is fast. That went in there for a strike. You can see his leadoff, too, a little bit. Walsh had that ground out to the uh, pitcher. Leading off the second inning. It's 0 for 1. That one ripped. If it's fair, we got a tie ball game. Deep down the line and fair ball. Oh. 4 to 4. Everything by home runs. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, if we were going to host a collegiate home run derby, we have, I think, at least five players in this ballpark right now that are going to be competing. This is astronomical. Well, Walsh, we said it. He's in scoring position in the batter's box. <laughs> he's got 26 now career home runs. And he's only five away from the career home run record there at Oregon. And Ryan Cooney steps in. Cooney did what last time up? Uh, home run. This time a ground ball to second base. Crenshaw's got it. Fires the first in time to get his man. And that is just the first out of the inning. It is. I'll bring up Meggers. And Case needs to just think of that as, hey, we retired the leadoff man. Let's get out of this inning. <coughs> We have seen the ball fly. That ball off the bat of Walsh flew because he crushed it. Only question was, was it going to hook foul? That was the only hope. I mean, Eddie Pelk in right field did not even move. Mm -mm. Nope. He barely even turned his head to make sure it was fair. I mean, that would take incredible, incredible athleticism to go up and get that one. Oh, and two. Out of this world. Yeah, Pelk knew it was gone off the bat. Only hope was it was going to hook. It did not. That one in the dirt. Very even ball game. Oregon now four runs, seven hits, no airs, two left on. The Lopes four runs, seven hits, one air, and two left on. That air was the botched pickoff attempt of Hurd. And Madison threw it over there and hit him. The one, two. Swing and a miss. Got him. Ball gets away from Sheehan. He's got to step inside and fire down to first. So. Two quick outs after the walk and the two-run shot. Meggers is retired, and uh, Garate at the play with two down. First strikeout of the ball game for Case. Second strikeout by GCU pitchers. Garate flew out to center to end the second inning. He's 0 for 1. He's been playing well so far. He doesn't have a home run yet, may I say. You never <laughs> know what can happen. <laughs> yeah, especially today, in today's especially, game. Right? <laughs> But, you know, 15 hits on 37 at-bats, it's pretty good. You know, hopefully he wants to join his teammates today and celebrate and one over the, over the wall. Chop foul. 0-2 on Garate. Huge at-bat batter here for Case. Don't want to flip that lineup. Make a top of the order lead off the fifth. Don't give him a chance here. In the fourth. 4-4 four, four ball game. The 0-2. Swing and a miss. He got him. Tagged out by Sheehan just to make sure. So after the walk and the two-run shot to tie the game, ground out, strike out, strike out. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 4-4 four, four ball game here at Brazel. Please, can I have these, Mommy? 
Finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. Check it out, sis. My work from anywhere. Cozy, grab yourself a drink. Is this dog food in your fridge? It's not dog food. It's fresh pet. Real meat, real veggies. Seems like a lot of space to waste on a dog. You know where there's a lot of space? You're all the family I need. Fresh Pet. It's not dog food, it's food food. New pitcher on the mound for the Ducks, Ian Umlaunt, in a new ball game here. 4-4, everything being scored via the home run. Two solo shots for the Ducks, and then a two-run shot by Jacob Walsh in the fourth. Two two-run shots by the Lopes, one by York, one by Wilson. Umlaunt checks into the game in relief of Colin Clark, who goes uh, three innings and just about what you want out of a starter in these midweeks. Umlaunt, the lefty, six-foot sophomore out of Sherwood, Oregon, and Sherwood High School. Yeah, he was, uh, he was really good his freshman year. If you take a look back, you know, he held that 2.6 ERA and... You know, obviously, you see it's a little high there, but we talked about it. Numbers go down as season progresses, so we'll see what he can do on the mound tonight. Actually, in today's beautiful afternoon, not a lot of clouds and more baseball to play. Can't have it any better than that. Pelk, Sheehan, and Neville do up the bottom third of the order for the Lopes. Pelk had a base hit single in the second. Sheehan bunted him over, but he was stranded there when the inning ended. Pelk. Having a great first year for GCU, hitting 343. Already collected 12 hits in his uh, early GCU career. Good battle out there in right field between him and Diaz. Up high, ball one. All of the outfielders for Lopes hitting well over 300. I mean, there's just not enough room out there. I mean, Verdusco's got to play. Wilson's got to play. Pelk and Diaz both got to play, too, but there's only three spots. Indeed. The 1-0 in there for a high strike, 1-1. One one. You have to think, what's what's going through your head if you're Greg Wallace, you know, the substitutions, the switches, and things like that? You, what are his reasons for switching out and things like that? Up high. A lot of times they'll look at, like, you know, even though you're getting out or you're getting hits, are your bats good? Are you, are you making good contact? Are you having a good approach to that? Yeah. In the air, left center field. Neville, the center fielder, comes over, makes the grab, one down. Who do you think gives you the best opportunity against the pitcher? But a uh, lot of good options, and you got to keep them all playing. So, yeah. You know, maybe try to rest at times, guys, but early in the season, man, you don't want to rest them too much as Sheehan steps in because you want to keep them. Especially, in a groove, right? Yeah, you can have a pinch hit every now and then, too. You know, yeah. make sure they get their, get some action. Sheehan goes after the first pitch, looking for his first base hit of Heads the up. season. Fouls it off. John 0 for 16 on the year. Had the sack bunt in the second inning. And you'd love to see Sheehan get going offensively. I mean, for him, even if he could hit around 230, 240, you'd be fine with that because he really is the best defensive catcher the Lopes have. The 0-1, inside 1-1. One one. You've seen him block multiple balls in the dirt, and that's a huge thing when you have, uh, you know, huge for a catcher to be able to do that when you got pitchers throwing those sliders low and in the dirt, trying yeah. to break them off and let, make guys chase. Yeah, all about that hand-eye coordination, you know, keeping your eye on the ball. These balls are coming at you 85, 90 miles an hour. And if you can field it and get yourself in the right position and make a play off it, especially at second base, you know, you're looking for a bright future ahead. The one, two for Sheehan. Inside. Count goes to two and two. The pitch, ground ball foul, almost hit Greg Ooh. Wallace. Count stays at two and two. Sheehan out of Elk Grove, California. Remember a couple years ago, we were up at uh, 
Well, in Sacramento State, Sheehan's senior year of high school, and he came over, watched the ball game, got to chat with him and his family, and said, oh, yeah, he's set to go down to GCU next year, coming over to check out the Lopes at uh, Sac State, you know, right in his backyard. Yeah. The 2-2. Rip down the line, just foul. E. Well, good at bat for Sheehan here. I mean, he hasn't had a lot of good ABs this year. This one battling. So a good sign with Neville on deck. Yeah, he'll go, he'll go back home late March against Sac State too. Two-two from Umlaut. Down low. Three-two count. Very good at bat by Sheehan here. He's watching it. He is being patient. He wants it too. Payoff pitch from Umlaut. Maybe a little high, but he didn't want it to go by. Fouls it back. Sheehan coming from an athletic family. His mom, Crystal, played volleyball. His grandfather, Ed, pitched for the Seminole Oilers. Seminole Oilers. Cleveland affiliate, the 3-2. Swing and a miss. Got him on a high fastball. So it goes down as a strikeout, but that was one of the better at-bats we've seen yeah. from uh, Sheehan this season. Yeah, he was, he was waiting for it, Michael, but he just couldn't figure out. You know, he tipped that last one you just mentioned it uh, before that last pitch, but he tipped it high, fouled it off, tried to stay in this, stay in that at bat, but just couldn't read that one right there, unfortunately, and goes down swinging. Neville at the plate, popped out in foul territory to the third baseman, Garate. His first A.B. has played some good defense, starting a double play, making the tag on, on a hopper. The throw from Sheehan for the uh, caught stealing of, yeah, we've had a couple of tag outs at home already today. Neville Chopper, no man's land. Umwalt gets it, though. Beautiful play by the pitcher, Umlant. Only guy that could make that play. And the Lopes go in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We've completed four. 4-4 four, four ball game here. Brazzle Field at GCU Ballpark. At Raising Cane's, we know quality takes time, patience, and the best ingredients, which is why every chicken finger we serve is hand-battered and cooked to order just for you. We never take shortcuts. That doesn't mean you can. Introducing an even faster and easier way to order Cane's with our new app. Find your closest restaurant, customize your meal, pay, and schedule pickup. So next time, take it easy and order with the Raising Cane's app. Raising Cane's chicken fingers, one love. <laughs> The future looks good. The future looks good to me. We'll find our way back. We're on the right track. And we don't look back. No, no. The future looks David Case back on the bump for his third inning of work. And this is huge for the Lopes. I mean, they've got it lined up where some of the guys that they're going to use over the weekend and late relief be more than happy to bring him here on a Wednesday with the first game being on Friday if uh, this guy here, Case, can get him maybe one more inning and he might be done. One more Possibly would be two if he's, uh, if, he's, if he's going quickly here. And he'll face, though, the top of the order, Casella. Neville and Smith, and he's done pretty well with uh, Neville, Neville and Smith, but boy, Casella, the guy up, solo shot in the first, double in the third. Squaring to bunt that time, and that pitch just missed, ball one. Yeah, I almost want to, like, think in my mind when I see Casella up to bat, I'm like, oh, here we go, first pitch swing, here it is, but not that time, he'll take his time on this one. The 1-0, squaring to bunt again, bunts it foul. Well, he squared around the first time, didn't offer, and that did not bring Eli Payton in 
at third base. So he thought, I'll try it again. And Peyton's still playing deep at third base. You could see it. Maybe one more time. I mean, he's confident. He's got good speed. He does. Eli is not creeping in, not buying it with a 1-1 one, one count. He squares to bunt again. He drops it down to third case. The only guy that can field it. Oh, he double clutched, and I don't think he got him. Boy, beautiful bunt. They were having Peyton back because he's such a good hitter. And Case, the only guy that can make the play. And watch the double clutch here. That cost him. Just a little bunt off the left. And Case saw it. He was ready for it. But, yeah, that double clutch definitely slowed him down a little bit. And very, very close call at first there with Eggert calling that one. So now Casella is a triple away from the cycle. Leadoff man aboard for the third time in this ball game. Chop foul by Neville. Little bunt single by Casella. That was almost at one of our camera crew over there. He's only seen six pitches and has three hits in the ball game. Neville struck out and walked. He's 0 for 1. Throw over, and that one pulled Ankeny off. Casella 5 for 5 in stolen base attempt, so he is a threat to go in a 4-4 ball game. DeVille hitting the buck 90. Ducks not playing small ball here. Count goes to 1-1. One one. Not trying to move the runner over for the heart of the order with Smith and Hurd on deck and in the hole. Mm, that one just missed. So now, great count to do something with. Two balls, one strike. You know Case is going to have to come close on one here. A little hit and run or possibly just a straight steal. Not going. And three and one the count. And Casella is making him a little anxious. Yeah, Case looked like he came off the, after he delivered that pitch, kind of stumbled off the mound a bit. Might have lost his footing on that one. It was... Well off the plate. Yeah. Three one count. Ball four. The fastball just misses. So the bunt single, the walk, and now that'll bring up Drew Smith with runners at first and second. Case is testing that pitch clock right there. And that's the thing, as a left handed pitcher, when you have a man on first especially with someone like Casella, he's going to tease you a little bit. He's going to yeah. want to make you anxious and make you think about whether or not you want to throw the next pitch. Ankeny in at first, possibly expecting a bunt here from Smith. He's the number three hole hitter. He does square to bunt. Pulls the bat back, ball one. Well, Drew Smith was up with runners at first and second in the third inning and ground into a 6-4-3 double play. Lopes could use that again. Now they get some action in the bullpen for GCU. Two and zero the count now, to Smith. So Case getting himself into a bit of a jam there. Looks like Brian Webb, the lefty, up warming up in the pen for GCU. We talked at the beginning of this inning as Sheehan goes out to buy some time. That it'd be nice if Case could get through this one, his fourth full inning of work. Lopes wanted to use Webb a bit late in this game. We're hoping to use him maybe a little bit later and with a lead. Might have to come in here to stop the Ducks from taking the lead. Smith hitting 325 on the year for Oregon. Check of the runners, the 2 0. 3 0. Now he can't find the strike zone. Yeah, Case is maybe a little off his game right now, especially with two on and no outs. First and second. What's amazing, that little bunt that uh, had he pulled it cleanly out of the glove, Pretty would, would have got his man, yeah. fielded it well. That one little mistake or one little hiccup, not even really a mistake, yeah. just happens, right? Just a little hitch. Yeah, now he's kind of in your head a bit. Oh, that guy shouldn't be there. Next thing you know, you walk the next guy. Next thing you know, you might look over too far to your right yeah. and you see Brian Webb getting ready to come in for you. 
So had if to he step can... off and fake the throw to second there. A little stall warning. 3-1 pitch to Smith. And he walked him. So Bunt single, back-to-back -back walks, and not sure if Webb's ready yet, but Lopes might need him right now, whether he's ready or not. Yeah, something new against who else than Jeffrey Hurd is coming in. He's a slugger. You I mean, gotta be careful. He doesn't scare you much, does he? <laughs> you can't you can't see it here, but I am shaking my head a little bit, folks. <laughs> That's gonna do it for Case. And it looks like Brian Webb is gonna come into the ball game for GCU. We'll take a break, come back and tell you all about B. Webb, but boy, he is coming into the uh, frying pan here. 4-4 ball game, bases loaded, nobody out, and Jeffrey Hurd coming up for Oregon. Parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. Take you back to the first inning. Jeffrey Hurd on second trying to score on a base hit single. The throw beats him, but the hop makes it a little slower. And here's the slide. Hurd thought he pulled that left arm back and got the right in. I tend to maybe agree with him on that one. But Sheehan got yeah. the call from the home plate umpire, and he was out to end the inning. I mean, look at that body. Good argument. Movement right there. Just, I think he, I think he did just get that left hand a little bit. And <laughs> think that's Sheehan thing. got the tag? I think he did. Like I know. See, that's how close it was. You that's, think he yeah. tagged him? I think he was <laughs> safe. But either way, now Brian yeah. Webb comes in in a very tough situation with Casella on third after a bunt single, push there with the walk by Neville, who's on second, and a walk by Smith, who is on first. That ends the day for David Case, and it's up to Brian Webb. Bases loaded, nobody out, Heard Arrows, Walsh coming up. And 4-4 uh, four, four ball game. So Webb comes in in a very tough situation against a very tough hitter. Heard one for two on the day, but the ball is flying to, to right. Off-speed pitch, strike one. A high strike call there. Yeah, 70 miles an hour, right? That was slow and steady. <laughs> You know, even I'm saying 70 miles an hour is a slow steady. I couldn't get out there and throw 70 for sure. <laughs> Webb's next pitch misses high and away. Well, Webb's one of those guys. He's not going to kill you with the fastball. He's one of those crafty lefties, they like to say. But it's also that arm slot, that delivery. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of between sidearm and three yeah. quarters, kind of falling right at you for the left-handed batter. Yeah, just a little above his hip. That one misses outside, two and one the count. Webb, 10.38 ERA. This was his fourth appearance in four and a third, 11 hits, five runs all earned. He's walked nobody and struck out six. Can't afford to walk here. The two one. In the air to center. Going to be deep enough for the sack fly. Casella tagging. The throw should come to third. It does. And the Ducks lead it five to four on the sack fly by Hurd. Well, Contact is Jeffrey Hurd's middle name. He has been making it today and does so with that sack fly. Double play still in effect as Neville and Smith hold. So Verdusco making the catch and just firing it back into third. That'll bring up Anson Arrows. But Jeffrey Hurd getting the job done again with the sack fly in the RBI. Arrows swings through one. So what does that give uh, Hurd on the year? Able to pick up his 12th RBI on that. And once again, the Ducks with the lead, 5-4. to four. Still work to be done here by Webb. 
the 0 1 to Arrows. Both runners go, and he fouled it off, and they would have had yeah. both of those bases. The double steal would have worked. I'm not sure if somebody missed. I'm not sure if somebody missed a. Uh, yeah, a sign or something. A sign? And the arrow swinging on that one, or if it was straight hit and run, or the, the runners just went because they got the walk and lead and nobody looked at them. But either way, they were going to steal both those bags. I mean, Neville. They had it. Was walking into third base. You had two of the three players in cahoots on the <laughs> field right there. Having three right there gives you an even better position. Nope, do Lopes dodge a bullet there with the foul ball. Neville back to second. Smith back to first. Arrow singled in the first. Walked and scored in the third. One chopped into the dugout. Was that Yorkie that grabbed that one? Fielded, wow. fielded that bare hand in the dugout. Breaking took, pitch just missed. Oh, boy. Yeah, it took York off of first base after yesterday. Still gloving it without yeah, a glove doesn't even in the dugout. It. Put him back out there. Yeah. One-two pitch. Shot up the middle, base hit. Neville coming in, the throw going to be cut off, and it's 6-4. to four. RBI single for Arrows. Down in the count, one ball and two strikes. Gets the job done. Smith moves up 90 feet to second base as Neville scores. Well, in a happier world for the Ducks, you know, you had all three players in cahoots, and Arrows doesn't swing at that one pitch and you do have advanced runners and I'm trying to think does he does he get home on yeah would have scored base? two on that one absolutely would have scored two shot up the middle that one's going to get down too might have a chance with a good throw they're going to hold up the runner and the ball gets away so that was a gift that ball not struck as hard as arrows but Walsh sends it right back through the middle with the base hit single, they decide to hold Smith at second, so sacks full with Cooney coming to the plate. And Webb not out of any jam yet. No, he is not. Base is loaded. Double play still in effect here. Corners can bring it home. Looks like they're going to come home at third and then play it straight up the middle and Ankeny playing behind the runner. Now he's going to come in and play in front of the runner, I think. He's asking. Yeah, they're telling him, yeah, get in front of the runner. So they're going to come in at the corners, double play up the middle on a ball to second or short. 6-4, Oregon. That one's in there for a strike, 1-1. One one. Cooney had the uh, solo shot in the second, ground out to second in the fourth. Love to see him hit it at somebody here in the infield. Yeah, that was a great double play yesterday, too. Ground ball to third, glove, step on the bag, fired across, Peyton showing the leather, gets the job done, and the Lopes get out of a jam, but not before two come across. 6-4 Ducks as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Climbing to the top, yeah, I'm crushing it, crushing it. Well, two runs come across for the Ducks. Great play by Peyton. Great play by York on that <laughs> uh, foul ball into the dugout. York snagged it barehanded. Yeah, man with no fear. You look to see all of his teammates around him duck and get down, and York says, I got this, guys. Well, Peyton with great play to get the Lopes out of a jam, but not before two more come across. So the Ducks lead at 6-4, to four, but 
Boy, that double play that Peyton diving to his left with the backhand, stepping on the bag and firing across. Great play and top of the order for the Lope. See if they can get at uh, Ian Umlant. Umlant came in last inning and retired the Lopes in order. One, two, three, the bottom third. Yeah, I need to find a little more momentum. We talked about it in one of our keys of the game. You know, they get if they get rolling within the first three, they win five of their last six, six, but they can find a way to come back and put another two on the board. You know, it feels like it's kind of been of a trading game, you know, runs batted back and forth in by each team. So Lopes are due, you could say. Lefty lefty matchup here. Y'all one from Umlot, square into Bont. That one just misses. One and one the count to Crenshaw, who's 0 for 2 in the ball game. Flew out to right and struck out, hitting 385 on the year. Well, that one buzzed him inside. Two and one the count. It's like Brock Tony. Starting to loosen up in the pin for GCU. Just now starting to loosen up, so not sure if he'll be coming in or not. Off-speed pitch, caught the top part of the strike zone. Two balls, two strike to count. Yeah, possibility. If there's three quick ones here for GCU, probably not. But if this goes a little longer, he might be warm enough to come in for the sixth. Hit pretty well, right center field coming over is Neville and tracks it down, running onto the warning track. Good job by Neville, got the start in right field yesterday, out there in center, looked like a natural track in that one. Yeah, he got under it, it was cracked well, but just perfect tracking from Neville. Read it well off the bat and ran it down, hung up just a little bit too long for Crenshaw. So he's retired, 0 for 3 on the day. Verdusco is two for two, a couple of singles and scored a run, was thrown out at the plate trying to score in the third inning. So Cade following up a no-hit day, 0 for two yesterday, although he got on base twice with a walk and a hit batter. Two for two in this one. Hitting 388 on the year, a couple of home runs. In the air to right. Got under it a bit. Arrows settles under it. Two down. This was the problem the Lopes had in the ball game yesterday. They scored early, but then they started putting goose eggs on the board yeah. after the third inning, and the Ducks kept scoring. Yeah, it's it's been holding them back. You know, even anything like if York could go again, you know, maybe get one over the wall. But they've, you look at it, seven hits, four runs. It's good little ratio there. But, you know, late in these games, they've got to find their rhythm. In there for strike one. Well, the Lopes uh, scored two in the first two innings and then didn't score again until the eighth inning last night. That was their undoing as the Ducks scored one in the second, three in the third, two in the fifth, one in the seventh. Just kept piling on one here, one there. Yeah, a little salt in the wound as they were ending that game. Yeah, and then they... Put it out of reach with the two-run shot in the ninth by Walsh. Yeah. Lopes had cut it to seven to four in the bottom of the eighth, the one-one. Got under that one. Walsh in foul territory, looking straight up into that sky, makes the grab, and so Umlaut has come in and retired six in a row. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We go to the sixth. 6-4, Ducks. Compliments build confidence. With one for me and one for you. At YoPlay, we believe in strengthening women. So we partnered with Girls Inc. to help build confidence by sharing compliments on every YoPlay lid. Now in stores. I'm Michael Sarah, and human skin is my passion, which is why I developed this. CeraVe. My cream. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> CeraVe. Developed with Michael Sarah. You like? There's its perfect crossover opportunity. At Quick Trip, there's a world of refreshing possibilities at your fingertips. Fountain, fresh fruit, or frozen? The only question is, what will you pour first? QT, more than a gas station. 
I'm partnering with SoFi because they care about making your money work for your ambitions. Recognize a generational player. Join the official bank of the NBA. SoFi, get your money right. Is it called What's Come the name of this song? Ryan Webb back on the bump for the Lopes. He came in with the bases loaded in the fifth. Two runs scored while he was in there. Both of those charged, though, to David Case, and it's a 6-4 lead. Those are the first those are the first two runs that scored without a home run last inning. What's going on? We had something going there. We scored on a sack fly and a base hit single. It's not yeah. supposed to happen today. No. It's supposed to be home run derby. It is supposed to be home run derby. That's what I signed up for. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Magers and Garate to lead it off. Fouled back. Chase Magers, a base hit single, was caught stealing in the second, and then he struck out in the fourth. Down the count, no balls and two strikes. Lopes need to bounce back here. <coughs> Oregon scored one in the first. Lopes answered with two in the first. Oregon scored one in the second. Lopes did not answer until the bottom of the third when they scored two. That one, little nub shot over the head of the shortstop. You could hear that Yeah. off the bat. Didn't get all of it, but certainly got enough of it. So two-hit day for Meggers, yeah, well, the catcher today. Meggers got a nice little chip on that one right there, and he, he forced Neville to kind of fall back just a little bit. And if you didn't catch it, but Meggers was faking his way to second. Um, but thanks to Crenshaw, getting in there quickly, not allowing that. That's the fifth time in six innings that they have had the leadoff man aboard. I mean, that's just fantastic. You yeah. want to get that leadoff man aboard. Garati at the plate. Megers attempted a steal back in the second. We'll see if he does it again. Tougher with the lefty. Square into bunt. Ooh, he tried to bunt at that one up high. He count goes to 0-2. Garate fly out to center field and a strike out in the fourth. He's 0 for 2. Top of the order on deck. Casella. That one ripped to right. Pelt going back. Looking up. Off the wall. Plays it off the wall. Nobody on second or else they would have had a play at second. I'm not sure where Neville was. He was out there backing up the throw. But had he been on second base, Pelk might have been able to throw out Garate as it is. A double. And you got runners at second and third. Nobody out top of the order coming up. Yeah, and I'm going to take a quick little talk I in mean, the middle. I, yeah, I think Neville was thinking that that was an easy stand-up double, but Pelt got to it in a hurry. Yeah, read it and well. And flipped it back in really well. That'll end the book on Webb. New pitcher coming in. It's Tony. We'll tell you all about it when we come back. 6-4 Ducks, and they're threatening here in the sixth. Compliments build confidence. With one for me and one for you. At YoPlay, we believe in strengthening women. So we partnered with Girls Inc. to help build confidence by sharing compliments on every YoPlay lid. Now in stores. Oh! Refill? Help yourself, man. Dude, dog food in the fridge? It's not dog food. It's fresh pet. Real meat, real veggies. Real weird. He was bad luck anyway. Fresh pet. It's not dog food, it's food food. Can human skin truly be this moisturized? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Sarah V. Developed with Michael Sarah. We like? <laughs> I need this win. <laughs> Brock Tony enters the ball game. The righty out of. Uh, Liberty, Missouri, and Central Missouri pitched at Warrensburg. 15 appearances last year. Transferred over to GCU for a second collegiate season. Played a couple varsity seasons at Liberty, and then Central Missouri and Warrensburg, not too far away from his hometown, decided to venture a little further west. Comes into the ball game, and once again in a bit of a jam. Looking pretty good though through five and two thirds innings. 
The five walks, five strikeouts, not what you want, but that 1.59 ERA has pitched himself in and out of some jams. Yeah, and it definitely has. But when you take a look back at when he was at Central Missouri, you know, he had six strikeouts against Davenport. And if he can get three here early, quick, that will definitely give some boost of confidence to the offense coming back for GCU. 6-4 ball game. Meggers led off the six with a little flare into shallow left, but a double by Garate. Runners at second and third. Nobody out top of the order. Casella is a triple away from the cycle. Had a solo shot in the first, doubled in the third, a bunt single in the fifth. Triple typically the hardest of those to get. Yep. Casella has not had a triple all season. This isn't really a triples ballpark either. I mean, can really get into the gap even if you gap one you can really get out there quickly with the speed of these outfielders yeah 2-0 count though he's in the driver's seat here against tony popped him up fouling out of play two and one the count day gets a little brighter our fans in the stands have to be a little more aware of the high fly balls that come towards them 2-1 count from Tony. 3-1. and one. Tony out of Liberty, Missouri. I grew up in Kearney, Missouri, just about 15 minutes away from Liberty. I agree with him. His favorite restaurant is Joe's Kansas City Barbecue. That's fantastic. But he's a Cardinals mm. fan, not a Royals fan. Come on, man. Really? St. Louis You're Cardinals. Just right, outside of, uh, right outside of KC, the 3-1. Popped him up. Crenshaw going out, Pelk going in. Will it be deep enough? Will they even try Pelk's arm? They are going to try it. Oh, Pelk throws it into second. I, I don't know what Pelk was thinking. Like he didn't come up firing and both men tagged and neither should have been able to tag. No, I'm, I'm trying to think. Oh, my goodness. What was running through his mind right there? He had an easy throw. He pumped once. Let's take another look at it. Sack fly nine, but I, I thought Pelk, had he come in on it, he kind of waited under it. Did he forget a man was on third? He didn't look like he was in throwing position. Kind of just camped under yeah, it. Yeah, he lost his hat. Started. Pumps once. Hmm. Interesting. Well, seven to four as Meggers comes in to score on the sack fly by Casella. So Casella's having a day. A couple of RBI, and he's still three for three. That one ripped by Neville. Deep and gone. Oh. Did that hit the scoreboard or clear the scoreboard? I'm pretty the, sure the video it board out it. there. I mean, that was a blast right at that video board. Yeah, he kissed that one goodbye from the get -go. Man, waiting on that one. Two-run shot. So there's we're back to our home runs here. And just like that, this one getting a bit out of hand. Yeah, Nine we, to four, Oregon. We were through nine innings the other day and it was nine to four we are through five pardon me the top of the sixth and it's nine to four already drew smith at the plate now well home runs the story as we said that's a fourth home run of the day for the ducks second two run shot for the ducks they also have a couple of solo shots two and oh the count now to Smith. Smith looking for his first base hit of the day. He walked his last time up. 3-0. and The Ducks went through seven batters in the fifth inning. Managed to put up two, and so far so good in the sixth. 3-0 in there. Nope. Down low. Ball four. So Tony coming in and scuffling a bit here. Looked like that uh, miscue, bit of a miscue out there and right by Pell. That, that pump decided not to throw home and then was too late to throw to third. Might have gotten their heads a bit here. That walk brings up Jeffrey Hurd, who is a one for two, a single and a sack fly, also ground out to short. He's another guy that he's put himself in scoring position just by coming into the box as uh, he's got all kind of long ball power.
Heard hitting 435 on the season. Lays off that one up high. It's got 20 base hits and 46 at bats. A couple of home runs and 12 RBI. Two on one. So now at a good hitter's count, and Drew Smith faked a steal on that one. He is three for three in stolen bases. Not sure they want to take a bat or a runner off the board possibly with hurt up, but they might want to still be aggressive. Tried to check his swing. I think had uh, Jason Rogers been down at third, he yeah. might have called that a strike. But that's, I mean, Rogers has no better view than the home plate umpire on that because he shifted around behind second base, and the Lopes dugout's giving it to him, but I, I agree with him in that one. You don't want to punch a guy out when you don't have a better view than the home plate guy. That one ripped down the line, and it's going to get into the corner. Smith on his horse. Pelt comes up with it. Going to fire it in. They'll hold Smith at second, and Hurd's got a double. So Smith stops at third. I think I might have said they held him at second. They held him at third. But another double, another extra base hit, and Hurd's got a two for three day going. That'll bring up Anson Arrows with two in scoring position. Yeah, it wasn't a great throw in from Pelk. And they held him at third, but I honestly think because it chopped a little bit on the grass out there, they probably he might have actually had a chance. But, you know, smart enough to hold him out there. First pitch hits is the inside corner to Arrows. Anson... Uh, two for two, had a single, walked and scored in the fourth, and then singled in a run in the fifth. Arrows just continuing to hit. 538 on the season. Bounced up there, nicely blocked by Sheehan. Arrows still looking for his first home run of the year. Tony from the stretch. Nobody warming up in the Lopes pen. Two and one. You want to save some pitchers for the trip out to Texas. Right back at us. Fouled him back. Can't goes two and two. Yeah, we've got this window open here, Michael. You think we're going to get one? You think we could get one? You think Man. you'd be ready for that? I've got enough protection. You're all alone over there. <laughs> I've been calling games so many years here, Braslin. I've never gotten one. Yeah, how many years have you been here? Well, that's my 15th year. Wow. Doing ball games. Chopped through the left side. That's going to score one. Hurd had to hold up, and now he decides to hustle through as that ball dies in shallow left. So a base hit single by Arrows. He gets another RBI. 10-4, to four, the Ducks. Smith brings it in for the 10th run, and that'll bring up Jacob Walsh. Yeah, arrows. Two-run shot is last time. No, single is last time up. Two-run shot before that. On his way to first, Arrows pumped his fist a little bit. He was happy. He was like, I got on. And he puts in another run here, making it 10-4. Only one out here. Yeah, Top Arrows has been six. on base four times today. Three singles and a walk. Shot through the hole. Walsh with a base hit single. Hurd scores, making it 11 to 4. Arrow stops at second. So in this inning, single, double, sack, fly, homer, walk, double, single, single. <laughs> Ninth hitter coming up, Ryan Cooney. Well, I mean, going through an order once in an inning is. It's astounding. If you can manage to get past Cooney and head back to Meggers, who already had a single, I mean, you, I, I'm going to say it, but you've got to be smiling if you're Mark Wazikowski on the Oregon Duck side. You have to be smiling. You have to be thinking, hey, we're, we're in Arizona. We know how we play well in Arizona. We'll continue to do that. Tony, it's on him. Nobody warming up in the pen. Up high ball one to... Cooney, who had a solo shot in the second, ground out to second in the fourth, and ground into a double play in the fifth. Lopes could really use a double play ball right here. 
already dug themselves a significant hole down 11 to 4. In the air, hard, hit well to right. Pelt going back, reaches up, makes the grab, and then they're going to get the double play. Arrows can't believe the ball was caught. He's already rounding third. Pelk runs it down. The unconventional double play. Wow. Might have saved the Lopes right there. Oh, my goodness. Five runs on six hits. No errors and a man left on. The Lopes head to the bottom of the six, down 11 to four. I am here to contest the new Water Wings from Whataburger. What? Real wings have bones. And these boneless wings are actually premium chicken tender bites tossed in one of Whataburger's famous sauces. Honey butter, honey barbecue, buffalo, or uh, sweet and spicy. Thank you, Your Honor. Those do not turn these Wada wings into real wings. I know what a real wing is. That is no wings. Grand Canyon University makes earning your degree possible with over 130 academic programs for traditional campus students with more than 80 bachelor's programs offered online. GCU provides you with the personal support you need from complimentary unofficial transcript evaluations within 24 business hours to scholarships, academic support, and your GCU graduation team led by your own university counselor. Find your purpose at GCU. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Well, we said it was going to be a home run derby. Take a look at all the long balls here. A couple by uh, the Lopes, York, and Wilson. I mean, Smith got one for Oregon. Walsh got one. I'm going to blast by Neville right there. And it is an 11 to 4 ball game. I lost my count. I'd have to look at it to see how many of these runs have scored by home run. All of the Lopes runs. Two two-run shots. York hit a two-run shot in the first. Three-run shot in the third by Wilson. Uh, Casella got him going with a one-run shot, a solo shot in the first, a solo shot in the second by uh, Cooney. Two-run shot by Walsh in the fourth, and a uh, two-run shot by Neville yeah. in the sixth. So six of theirs, is that the right at, count? At six least. of their 11 <laughs> by least. home run? Yeah. I yeah, mean, I think it's six of 11, six runs by, of their 11 by home runs, and the Lopes, all of their runs by the home run. But bottom line is, Oregon continuing to pile it on, and the Lopes, after they got those four runs, have kind of gone into cruise control offensively. Haven't scored since that two-run shot by Wilson in the third. Well, in the fourth, Oregon put two on the board. In the fifth, they put two, and then a five spot, the big crooked number in the sixth. And Ankeny, Wilson, and Peyton do up for the Lopes. They're going to have to bat around. Yeah, Oregon's just, like you said, piling on. They are rolling from last night's win as well. You know, they won 9-4. to four. It's 11-4, to four, and we're not even through the seventh yet. So, fingering, hopefully GCU can find something late here in this ball game. Ankeny, a couple of doubles in this one. He's two for two. Bo has been fantastic for the Lopes all year. Continuing here with a couple of doubles. See if he can get the Lopes going here and get the leadoff mat aboard. Gets under that one and skies it into shallow center field. The Ville coming in makes the grab one down. Well, they've got 16 hits, the Ducks, through six innings. We were talking about it a little bit, but they're almost averaging three hits an inning, which is, I mean, I mean, when are you gonna when are you gonna look at that another time and go, hey, we're averaging three hits an inning as a collegiate baseball team? That's that's pretty good. Well, 15 innings. I mean, right at it. You know, between last night and today, as Wilson steps in from the right side and fouls it back, swung out of his shoes. But they had 14 hits last night, so 30 hits in 15 innings. I mean, <laughs> oh my, yeah, it's just about two. I mean, they're yeah, they're 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 really swinging the bats well. Talking to their folks though, they said, hey, look. With us, we feel like we're pretty comfortable with our offense. We got some good players because I was telling them I, I love their offense. And they're like, well, it just comes down to pitching on the weekends. You know, I mean, yeah. we'll see. Um, we think we're going to be okay, but we're just not quite sure. Fouled that one back 0-2. So that'll be, I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, it usually comes down to pitching and defense. But in college baseball, offense can cover a lot of problems. It really can. 
and prospects, you know, from all different LSU, all these different teams, they recruit well out of the high schools. Yeah, Mark Wasikowski's done a fantastic job at Oregon. I mean, Oregon State was really running that state for years, and Wasikowski has come up there. And I mean, you might have the you know two of the best teams in the Pac-12 up in Oregon. Yeah. I mean, UCLA obviously is going to be a good team, but USC scuffling mightily. ASU not playing great. U of A, the one two, popped it up. It's like everybody's just swinging for the fences, and you're you know you're down seven. Solo homer doesn't mean anything. No. Pops it out to short, two down. I mean, you can swing as much as you want, but you got to be able to get on base at least. You want to start giving – you want you want a couple more batters coming up to bat each inning. You don't want just three in a way. Pinch hitter for Eli Payton, Elijah Burries. So they go uh, lefty-righty matchup. Payton 0 for 2 in this one. So Burrides will be the hitter here with two outs in the sixth. Yeah, he came in once yesterday. Didn't get to do anything with it. See if he can contribute a little bit here. Kind of want to at least close this gap. Seven, seven run lead is a dot to the soul. Yeah, Burries flew out to right in his pinch hit yesterday, but... And he ranks fifth on GCU's D1 career hits list. He just needs 17 hits to surpass Jacob Wilson's record of 224 career hits in the D1 era. The 2-0. Ripped. Pretty high going back. Deep at the track. Now coming in a bit and making the grab. And Burry slaps his hands. He just missed it. But Lopes retired in order for the third inning in a row. 11-4, Ducks with the lead. Finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. Can human skin truly be this moisturized? Oh. Yeah. Wow. CeraVe. Developed with Michael Cera. We like? <laughs> I need this win. <laughs> I'm partnering with SoFi because they care about making your money work for your ambitions. Recognize a generational player. Join the official bank of the NBA. SoFi, get your money right. Brock Tony back out there for GCU. Ducks blew it wide open. Since the last time the Lopes scored in the third inning, the Ducks have put uh, nine on the board. Burry stays in at third be third base, but it's really been after that after that two-run shot by Wilson. The Lopes haven't had a base runner aboard. Ten retired in a row, and like I said, during that stretch, the Lopes ten in a row retired. The Ducks nine on the board, yeah. eleven to four. The comparison there is uh, you don't really want to compare it if you're a Lopes fan, at least. But if you can, you know, just do the little things, at least. Just minimize your mistakes. Try and find a way to get at least on base. Megers, Garate, and then the top of the order in Casella. And, oh, by the way, that's who led off the uh, sixth inning. And through six innings for the Ducks, they've had the leadoff man aboard five of those six innings. Only time they didn't was in the second, and they still scored a run on a solo shot by Cooney. Yeah, they, that third inning is the only time that the Lopes have managed to stop them. And, you know, you think you stop them in the third, you maybe can stop them in the future. And that was that big double play they needed. They had runners at first and second and nobody out and got that 6-4-3 double play. Yeah. Fouled off, count goes to one ball and two strikes. Well, obviously, we'll be keeping more of an eye on the Lopes and the whack. Shot into left field. Another base hit for Meggers. Leadoff man aboard for six out of the first seven innings. And that throw goes way wide. 
and Crenshaw saves it and throws it back to short. Might have had a chance that he throw into first, but he was just trying to keep the runner from advancing. Yeah, let's take a look at it. I mean, just sloppy play by the Lopes. He got under it well. Throw in. It was just a little left. Right I mean, there. missed the cutoff, chase man. It that, down. You don't. I mean, he's not going to go for a double on that. You just want to hit the cutoff, man. The Lopes yeah. are just all out of sorts here. Third hit of the day for Meggers. Fouled back by Garate. Meggers is in there uh, for Thompson, who started at catcher uh, in in the ball game yesterday. He started all first eleven ball games. Meggers making a name for himself a little bit. Yeah, he's asking for more playing time, whether it be behind the plate or somewhere else. I mean, he started four games, so. Well, things like this, a game like this, can definitely sway to coach's perspective of you. Yeah, give the coach a reason to, to keep you in. Don't give him a reason to pull you out. Megger's doing that. That one ripped into center field. Coming over is Verdusco. Fields it, spins. His throw back in. Misses the cutoff, man. Chance for the runner to advance. And he does. Another poor play by the outfielders. I mean, wow. that throw's got to go into second so that you have first and third. You're, you're not going to spin and throw a guy out going first to third on that. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, they're just trying to force it as soon as they can. They want to get, they want to keep the runners on the right half of the infield and just played it well right there. So, I mean, yeah, I mean I'm not sure exactly what the switch is going to be here, but... You know, you just don't want any more coming in. You know, you second and third now, no outs. You got to stop Top something the order. here. Justin Casella. Action in the pin. Big swing and a miss. Casella was trying to make it a 14-4 ball game. He's got a home run, double, two RBIs. With his stat line like that, he's swinging with confidence today and the rest of this game. Yo, one ripped, going back off the wall. One run scores, Garate right behind him, gonna come in, throw to second. They should get him and they do. Well, Casella gets a base hit single thrown out, trying to scratch it to a double, but Meggers and Garate score easily, making it 13 to four. I'm trying to think, there was maybe five yards of distance between the two runners coming in. Yeah, they both played it perfectly. I mean, Meggers is going to stay near third as Neville checks in. You see the throw out of Casella trying to stretch it. Big swing and a miss. But, you know, Meggers, if, if that ball's caught, he can go back and score. Even if it's not caught and goes off the wall, he's going to walk in. Garotti yeah. right on his heels. He had to get a good jump. That was the 19th hit of the day. Oof. Not the scorecard the Lopes were hoping for here as they head to conference play after this one. Squaring to bunt now in there for a strike. Count goes to one ball and two strikes on Neville. Neville's got that average up to 227. Struck out in the first, walked in the third, walked in the fifth, and a two-run homer in the sixth. Well, they're loving this weather right now. And they're not going to have to go very far to continue playing well in it, too. Imagine they're staying in the same hotel the whole, I, whole week. I, I could assume that they were. You know, they, it's only maybe 20 extra minutes yeah. if you're on the east side of or on the west side of Arizona. Count goes to three balls and two strikes on Neville. <coughs> and there's probably a chance they're just right in between both. Yeah, the Ducks. Start Pac-12 play against ASU, ball four. I think that's Walt Quinn out there warming up. Can't see for sure, but might be time, and Greg Wallace is going to make the change. So, uh, Tony is done for the day. 13-4 Ducks all over the Lopes. We've got a pitching change. We'll tell you about it when we come back. Keep climbing to the top, yeah, I'm crushing it, crushing it. Please, can I have these, Mommy? Fine.
finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. Make me go loco, loco. Make me go loco. Caribbean. Garrett Ahern, the freshman, is the new pitcher for the Lopes. 13 to 4, Ducks with the lead. Second appearance for Ahern here. Yeah, he's only pitched one inning so far. Uh, so hopefully he can get him out of this one and continue, maybe finish out this game for them because this is a bit of a nightmare if you are the Lopes right now. Freshman righty, Ahern out of Gilbert, Arizona, and Campo Verde High School. <coughs> Ahern a nine ERA in that one appearance, one inning, one run. It was earned off a of one hit. Gave up a double, walked a man. He's so he comes into this one with a one out, 13 4 ball game. And the Ducks threatening once again, Drew Smith. Set to come up to the plate with uh, runners at first, or excuse me, at first base and one down. I mean, had Casella not tried to advance to second after that two run single, or had the throw been a little off, you'd have runners at first and second, and nobody out. So that was a bit of a gift for the Lopes. Smith steps in, still looking for his first base hit. He's been on base twice with walks and scored once. Goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Up high, one on one. If you're Ahern, you don't want them figuring out quite right now. You want to give them some time, make them think about what they're going to be swinging at. The one one. Inside corner, one ball, two strike the count. Smith hitting 325 on the year. Does have that one home run, which he uh, got yesterday a two run shot back pick. Not in time. Sheehan with a nice throw though. Kind of goes to two and two. Actually, you got that. That was Walsh who pinch hit for him, got the two-run shot. Came in with one and run, but he did have a double yesterday. Smith did. Up high. Can't goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Smith looking for his third walk of the day. Would be back-to-back -back walks. and Not a great line for the pitchers here at GCU. A lot of hits given up. A lot of free passes given up as well. There goes the runner. Into right field coming in. Pelk, he might be able to double him up. The runner got a late start back in the dirt and picked by Ankeny. Boy, two of the worst base running decisions back to back have been double plays by Pelk he in got, the outfield. He got saves under the Lopes. 13-4. Ducks with the lead. Stretch time at Brazel. Keep climbing to the top, yeah. I'm crushing it, crushing it. I'm on my way now. It's not that sound. I'm 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 not I'm Michael Sarah, and human skin is my passion, which is why I developed this. Sarah V. My cream. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Sarah V. Developed with Michael Sarah. You like? <laughs> there's, it's perfect crossover opportunity. At Quick Trip, there's a world of refreshing possibilities at your fingertips. Fountain, fresh brewed or frozen? The only question is, what will you pour first? QT, more than a gas station. Three hits and ten walks. Not good. Nope. Pelk's a double play machine. Ugh. 
13-4 Ducks. Lopes have not had a runner on since the two-run shot by Wilson in the third. Ten straight retired by Ducks pitchers. Ian Umlon came on in that fourth inning. He's retired nine of those ten. Pelk and then Sheehan and Neville do up. First pitch in there, strike one. Lopes don't need to try to go long ball hunting here, even though it's been the day of the long ball. He's got a, he a lot of runners on base down by nine. One on one the count. Pelk had a base hit single in the second, flew out to center in the fourth. Made a bit of a defensive blunder, not throwing home or to third on a tag play earlier in the game, but he's ended the last two innings with double plays on fly balls to right. Yeah, he just had that most recent one, too. <laughs> oh, two ripped to right, but right at Arrows, who makes the grab. I mean, he squared that up. 11 in a row retired. I mean, I'm thinking Arrows could have just stood there right there. Maybe he only had to lean a little bit to try and reach for that one. Take another look at it. Good contact, gets underneath it a little bit. Just a couple of steps forward, and Arrows hits it right over to where Pelk plays, too. Sheehan at the plate, still looking for his first base hit of the year. Had a sack bunt in the second, struck out in the fourth. A good A-B, though, on that strikeout. Pushed it to 3-2, fouled off a couple pitches, and then chased a high one. Sheehan does have one RBI on the year. Swing and a miss. Can't goes to one and one. Pops that one up. Megger's coming over. He's going to make the grab. And that's 12 retired lopes in a row. That'll bring it up Cooper Neville. Neville popped down foul territory to Garate down at third in the second. Grand out to the pitcher back in the fourth. Boy, what a job Ian Umlaunt has done since coming in in relief. Fouls that one back, strike one. Umlaunt has retired 11 in a row. Get you caught up on a few changes here in the outfield. I don't have my uh, live stats uploading yet here. Here we go. Arrows goes to yeah. left. Betcher goes to center. Neville moves over to right. So 1-1 one, one count to Neville. Fouls it off one and two. Our crack producer director Travis Fleming noticing that. Good work, Travis. So Arrows goes from uh, right to left. Neville moves from center to right. And Betcher, who started in center last night, is in center field. That means Casella is done for the day. Fouled back our way. Almost Getting had close, that one. <laughs> Getting close. I'm Neville. standing up for these. The good A.B. You ever caught a foul ball at a game? I have, but um, not here. Mm. The one, two. Missed outside, two and two. I actually, blast in the past, I was at a Royals game, caught a uh, home run ball by Kent Herbeck Whoa. of the uh, Minnesota Twins. Look at that. Hit it to right field, and I caught it and immediately dropped it because it really hurt. <laughs> I bet it does. Those things come off the bat <laughs> swinging hard. I was stout. Two, two, ground ball right side. Just like that. 13 Lopes retired in a row since the two-run shot from Wilson in the third. Ducks still lead it, 13-4, heading to the eighth. Being a champion starts with care, preparation, and the desire to win. As a fierce fighter for injured clients, Sweet James knows what it takes to be a winner when the stakes are high and winning matters. Injured accident victims who hire Sweet James can count on a 98% winning record, over a billion dollars in settlements, and pay nothing until we win. The greatest athletes are your champions on the court. Sweet James is your champion in the courtroom. 
awarded Best Attorneys in America. Fresh grilled, that's hot. Mesquite Fresh Street Mex, where authentic meets modern. Visit us today at one of our Valley White locations. <coughs> 13 4 Ducks putting a whooping on the lopes here on a Wednesday. Even Neil Diamond can't get the fans excited. I, know. I mean, if you can't if you can't get excited about Sweet Caroline. You know it's a bad day at the ballpark it, for the home team. It's such an iconic song, and, you know, obviously I didn't grow up in the era of Neil Diamond. I what? wish I you didn't? did. No. Jack, what? <laughs> Your dad did. I'm only 22 years old. I'm doing what I can. You know, I do love listening to his songs, but, you know, Neil Diamond, he's got Sweet Caroline, bump, bump, bump. And you didn't hear anybody going bump, no, bump, bump. No, bum. Like, even the, the, the Ducks, you know, they got a good fan base out here. Yeah, they do. They're not getting into shirts. it either. Yeah. I mean, it's been one of those days. Look, credit to the Ducks. You look at the scoreboard out there, and they've continued to play baseball after the three innings. Two in the fourth, two in the fifth, five in the sixth, two in the seventh, 19 hits on the day. They've gotten 10 free passes. They're starting to empty their bench a bit here. The Lopes just, after the two-run shot uh, by, by Wilson to take the lead, uh, four to two, they haven't done anything. Nope. 13 retired in a row. And a you got to credit Ian Umlant. Uh, he's come in and retired 12 of those 13 in a row. Luke Hanekel, the pinch hitter here, and we're going to get kind of like a spring training splattering of pinch hitters yeah. here. Everybody's Jeffrey Hurd's little, done for the day. A little bit of action from everybody now. Hanekel pops it into shallow center field. Some changes. Looks like Pelk's out there in center field now. Diaz in right field. I think that might be Avila in left. can't see you know I had a pair of binoculars out in California where I'm from and I didn't bring them with me and I need to bring them back I'm going on spring break so I'll bring them back next time yeah I'm pretty sure that's Avila out there and left yeah Blake Avila in left Eddie Pelk in center Michael Diaz in right arrows he's now the left fielder not going to get pinch hit 401 the count Arrows having a day, having a midweek series. Fouls that one off. Arrows singled in the first, walked and scored in the fourth, singled in a run in the fifth, singled in a run in the sixth, but he was doubled off to end that inning on a bit of a base running blunder, but you can excuse that. Sit by a pitch last night, had a sack fly. Count goes to one and two. Two, two. Missed outside by Ahern. Chop foul. A lot of pinch hitters coming in probably for the Ducks. We mentioned that. But you don't want to shake your confidence by giving them hits too. Looks you like know. Troy Saunders, excuse me, down there at second base for Crenshaw. Chop foul. So you got a couple of freshmen Ooh. with Neville. Nice little play down there. Good third hands. base by Hinkle. Marcus Hinkle down there coaching third base. Hinkle so Troy Sanders and Cooper Neville, the two freshmen up the middle now. And uh, lost him. So Arrows aboard again. That's, I think, the 11th walk of the day. I believe so. For the Lopes. Now to bring up Jacob Walsh. Walsh has been doing his job for sure. Three for four. Two run shot in the fourth, single in the fifth, RBI single in the sixth. Ball one. Ankeny at first base playing behind the runner there, Arrows. 
Even though he could get a big lead, he might steal. I would doubt it, though. Ground ball to second. Saunders flips it to Neville. Throw over in time. The double play. The much-needed double play. Nicely turned by the freshman. We go to the bottom of the eight. 13-4. Ducks still in the commanding position with the lead. Climbing to the top, yeah, I'm crushing it, crushing it. I'm on my way now. It's my better self. I'm going to sell out the rainbow down. Please, can I have these, Mommy? Finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. Oh. Can human skin truly be this moisturized? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Sarah V. Developed with Michael Sarah. We like? <laughs> I need this win. <laughs> I'm partnering with SoFi because they care about making your money work for your ambitions. Recognize a generational player. Join the official bank of the NBA. SoFi, get your money right. Live. Couple of changes. Greg Wallace chatting about the batting order here as he made a lot of wholesale changes out in the outfield putting in Avila, Diaz, and then Sanders on the infield. New pitcher on the bump, Cole Stokes, the tall righty, number 55, the double nickel, 6'6", 225, freshman out of Redondo Beach, California, comes in, and he's got something to live up to. Umlaut retired 12 in a row, making it 13 retired in a row, back to the last out of the third inning. Well, yeah, he's only got one inning pitched. He's got three strikeouts, so, I mean, you know, maybe they're just trying to shut this one out, get it done. Cole Stokes coming in, try and just finish this out. This is as it has been a, a rocky game, one could say, in a nice way for the Lopes. Yeah, this is exactly what you want if you're the Ducks, right? You get out to Arizona a bit early in front of your Pac-12 debut you uh, for the season. You're coming back to a place where you mowed through the conference tournament winning four games in five days last year to punch your ticket to the regionals. You advanced to a super regional that you hosted. Your next time out to Arizona, you're pounding out, you know, close to 45 hits against a really good whack team. Yeah. Getting you set up perfectly and feeling great about yourself, at least offensively, going into a Pac-12 play against the Sun Devils. Well, I'm not sure if any of the ASU scouting or coaches are out here watching this game seeing what their competition looks like as they start the Pac-12 in two days but if they are out here they're looking at this Oregon team thinking all right well we've got to find a way to stop Hurd we got to find a way to stop you know all of the batters of this team I mean honestly if I'm trying to think off my top of my head I can't think of one who hasn't contributed so far in this game Troy Sanders came in defensively with Crenshaw Crenshaw 0 for 3 on the day Couple of flyouts and a strikeout. <coughs> Sanders still looking for his first base hit, base hit as a lope. Six at bats, a couple of strikeouts. Takes the first pitch, a strike from Stokes. Stokes rushing up there. Fastball guy, 94 miles an hour. As you mentioned, one inning struck out the side. Wants to do it again. Up high. Pitch to Sanders. Ground ball up the middle. Gets through. Sanders aboard. And the crowd, even though they're down nine, gives a little Bronx cheer there for the Lopes. First base hit since the two-run shot by Wilson back in the third. First batter to reach base. After 13 retired, that'll bring up Michael Diaz. Little and, spark. Yeah, now if you're the Lopes, I mean, you might not even think, and, oh, gosh, maybe we can come back and win this game down nine with two to go, but you want to do something to feel good about yeah. yourself heading out for that long trip to Nacogdoches. And especially, you know, late in the game, you're just finding a way to, you know, build that confidence again. You know, swinging at every pitch isn't what it's going to do. You have to be able to watch yourself carefully, calmly, collectively. And like you said, they 
have a bit of a road game. They'll come back eventually. But if they can just get a couple of hits, maybe get well, you know, two more runs on the board, you know, kind of close the gap a little bit. Diaz at the plate. He came in for Verdusco, went into right field, though, when Pelk moved over. Mark it in your book, though, in a seemingly a game that the Ducks are going to win. Troy Sanders gets his first hit as a lope, first D1 base hit. He is aboard. Diaz fouls it back. So the record book will be one, or the, the box will be one. The Lopes will want to rip up and throw away and never look at, but the Sanders family might want to hang on to that box score. And for sure, frame that. Do anything you have to. That one missed inside. Sanders down there at first base. A 3-2 count now to Michael Diaz. Yeah. Diaz hitting 500 on the year. That one just missed ball four. It was an interesting move by the home plate umpire, A.J. Lestaglio back there, kind of jumping out of the way. So base hit. After 13 retired in a row, Sanders bounces one up the middle and now walk to Diaz and Lopes got a little something going here. Lead off man aboard for the first time since that third inning. Little bit of life, all you need. Christian Perez to pinch it for Zach York. Chop foul by Perez. Well, I was talking about it, but the ASU coaches coming out here to get a little maybe insight on how this Ducks team played. They played yesterday. They beat Texas Arlington, and they will again face off very shortly. Perez fielded by Cooney. No play at short to throw, and in the dirt, bobbled by the first baseman. The bases are loaded for the Lopes. Perez aboard. Boy, it looked like Cooney wanted to go to second, but Diaz got a great jump on that. Yeah. Cooney decided he couldn't do it. He was fielded really nicely, but good hustle right there to get to first, and just a little, little bounce on the infield play. Bo Inkeny. That's good to see Perez get aboard. Perez, a guy they had high hopes for transferring over from New Mexico State. For last year, he was a second team all whack third baseman. Had a crazy year for New Mexico State, hitting nearly 350 on the season. Hasn't really got it going here. Hasn't had much of a chance. Yeah, I mean, just his first hit, so it's got to be. A little happy with himself, you know? Finding some playing time and getting on base, too. So base is loaded. Single to bounce through, a walk, and an infield single. Ankeny at the plate, leads the team with five homers. Ball gets away. Sanders, though, being very careful, making sure. Didn't get far enough away from Magers. Don't want to run yourself into an out here. As, you know, Lopes got something going here in the eighth inning. We talked about it, though. It looked like the starters were just trying to hit solo shots the, the, the last fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh inning. Mm -hmm. These guys just putting together base hit, walk, base hit, single. Yeah. Now Big you've... swing there, one and one to count to Ankeny. I mean, that's how you get back into a ball game. Next thing you know, you could put a, put a crooked number on the board and you start making the Ducks worry a little bit. I mean, you don't want, you don't want to worry if you're this late in the game if you're Oregon, but definitely something that could be. Club and Ground close. ball could be two. Cooney to Smith. Back to first. The run scores, making it 13-5, but the Ducks will gladly trade that run for two outs there. Just got out of that one, unfortunately, for the Lopes. Good hit, but just good positioning as well from the shortstop. So the runners move up. Sanders scores, and so... As we mentioned, talk about framing some box sheets. That was his first base hit as a lope, and that's his first run scored as a lope. That'll bring a Blake Avila. Chops it to first. Walsh is going to take it by himself, and that is the inning. But the lopes get one run on two base hits. There were no errors and a man left on. We've completed eight, 13-5, Ducks.
keep climbing to the top. Yeah, I'm crushing it, crushing it. Finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. Life. To the ninth we go. Ahern back on the bump for the Lopes. 13 to 5. Ducks. Ducks, as we mentioned, head to Arizona State. Start Pac-12 play. Final year of Pac-12 play. Lopes on the road to Nacogdoches. Taking on Stephen F. Austin. Starting WAC play. A little bit further trip for the Lopes than the Ducks. Yeah. And they came back from UTSA off of a tough two-game loss series. And they want to build. Oh, no. Cooney ground ball down to third. Burries has it. Fires the first. One pitch, one down here in the ninth. But as I was saying, like, they came off of that game, the walk-off wild pitch. It was just kind of a bummer to see that happen. And they just couldn't, couldn't hold on to that one. And they'll go back to Texas, hopefully not with that same feeling of what they accomplished there. Megers at the plate. Richard, sophomore catcher, hitting 300 on the year. He's had a nice day. Singled in the second, was caught stealing. Struck out in the fourth. Singled and scored in the sixth. Singled and scored in the seventh. Heading the count on Aaron, two balls and no strikes. Ground ball through the 5.5 hole. Three hit day, four hit day, excuse me, for Megers. Well, that'll earn you some more playing time. Indeed it will. So Lopes have turned, what, four double plays? They had the double play in the third. That was the 6-4-3 double play as uh, Garate steps up to the plate. They had a couple double plays that Pelk started, a 9-4-6 double play in the sixth, and then a 9-3 double play in the seventh, and then a double play last inning. So four double plays. A fifth would be really nice here for GCU. 0-1 pitch. Outside 1-1. And yeah, this is when you... a tough guy to double up, though. He's got wheels, and he's running from the left side. Yeah, this is one you just want to kind of put behind you if you're GCU. Just move on to the next. Don't think about it too much. The 1-1. One, one. Missed inside 2-1. and one. Well, they, I mean, they're going to talk about it probably afterwards, just like they did last night for a long time. The problem yeah. is just too many goose eggs on the board. I mean, you, you can't go into these five, four, five innings of just no offense. Rip down the line. That's going to be extra bases. Diaz coming over. Might have a play at Garate. Bobbles the ball. Garate was thinking two the entire time. Diaz trying to come up with it quickly. Drops it, and the double by Garate, his second double, third hit of the day, puts runners at second and third with just one out here in the ninth. He did not hesitate nope. whatsoever. He was rounding that base knowing he was going to second. He was running. And, I mean, that's what that's what you get with speed from Garate. Like, he, 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 he can hit it down the line. It doesn't matter how close the outfielder is to throwing that ball. He'll give you a run for your money. Up high, Bryce Betcher, who started yesterday, came in as a defensive replacement for Casella in the eighth. He's in that one spot, so his first at-bat of the day. Hitting 351 on the year. Does have the one homer, five RBI, and he's set up. Ooh, that ball fouled off, right off the face mask of A.J. Lestaglio, and the trainer's going to come out. That is humming when that goes off the face mask. Talk about ringing the bell. Ooh. Take another look at this. Oh, man. I mean, no chance for anything to stop that but the but the face mask. You see that one. Yeah, that that's ball's gonna... coming in about 90. It's coming oh, back at goodness. you. That'll Close shake you up for sure. Yeah. Wow. Lestaglio says he's okay. Thank goodness for protective gear. Yeah, there's a one-on-one on, one on Betcher. Missed outside, two and one. Betcher one for four yesterday. Had a base hit single in the fourth. Fly out, ground out, and strikeout. 
Didn't get the start here today. Came in defensively, and now his first day B. 2-1 count with runners at second and third, and the Ducks seemingly already having this game in hand. Fouled back two and two. Meggers down at third. He's already scored twice. Garate down at second. He's already scored twice. Pops it. Shallow outfield. Caught by Sanders. Runners have to retreat. Two down. You try to get out of this one right now. Mason DeVille got the start in center. He's in right now. Doesn't really matter where he's at. He's been on base four times. Well, he rounded the bases once. A two-run shot in the six. He's walked three times and struck out once. So one for two officially on the day, but been a menace to the Lopes. Hitting 227 on the year. Foul back. Strike one. Ahern trying to get the Lopes up and would take a mammoth comeback, but they still got three outs to work with. Never say never. It looks like Stokes is going to more than likely come out and try to finish this one off. Still some guys hanging out in the bullpen out there, but no action in the pin. One on one the count. High and tight. Well, GCU and the Oregon Ducks, they matched up for the first time in like almost, what was it, 2016 was the last time I think they played against each other? Correct me if I'm wrong. It was, or it might have been 2020, my apologies. Yeah, 2020. Yeah, it was four years. So Fouled back. And GCU actually did take that one. They did, they did take that win. Um, but unfortunately, losing last night's game, and tonight it is not looking like they will do that. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the ninth. Ahern trying to be the only GCU pitcher of record to not allow a run. Strike three called. Might have got a benefit on a high pitch, but called strike three, and we'll take it. No runs on two hits, no errors, and two left on. We go to the bottom of the ninth, 13-5. Ducks over the loops. Make me go loco, loco, make me go loco. Come see the Royal Caribbean. Finding your healthy has never been easier. Start with Sprouts. Live. Stokes back out there trying to close this one out. 13-5, Ducks in control. Burry's Pelk and Sheehan, unless we get a pinch hitter. Well, the Ducks trying to sweep this two-game midweek set. They beat the Lopes 9-4 yesterday, out hit them 14-6. Today, up 13-5, out hitting the Lopes 21-9. Lopes are going to have some stuff to work on. I know you'd like to just kind of forget about these two games, but a lot of goose eggs in the middle of this ball game and the middle of the ball game yesterday. And you can't do that against good teams because they're going to keep scoring. And that's what the Ducks did yesterday to win it 9-4. to four, And they did it even better here today, scoring after the Lopes were up 4-2 to two in the third. Lope, Ducks scored 2 in the fourth, 2 in the fifth, 5 in the sixth, and 2 in the seventh. First pitch to Burries. Didn't get the start. Came in as a pinch hitter for Peyton and uh, flew out to left. Takes that first pitch, a strike one. Strike two. Yeah. 
Swing and a miss, strike three. Well, Burry's injured at the beginning of the season. You can tell he's still trying to figure things out and trying to get his swing and timing down. So he sits down as the first out of the ninth inning, looks down to their final two outs. Eddie Pelk at the plate, first pitch wide. Pelk hitting 324. He got the start in right field, singled in the second, flew out to uh, center in the fourth, lined out to right in the seventh. He's moved over to center field defensively. That one banged off the rafters. Lopes next in action at home after Stephen F. Austin. They don't have a midweek next week. They come back and play Tarleton State at home for three starting Friday the 15th. Up high two and one. That'll be their second in conference play. Then they got a midweek at Arizona on the 19th and then at UTRGV. I mean, for the Lopes, it's Texas, Texas, Texas to yeah. get things started. And they had that non-conference against UTSA. They're going to start collecting their mail out in Texas if they're not careful. <laughs> Seriously. You think you're looking at Oregon, too. They are... After their time out here, they are in Eugene. Man, there's so much. I, can, I almost want to count out loud, but I'm not going to. It's at least 10 to 12 games at home. They'll play California, Arizona, Seattle, and Portland as well. But it's in Oregon still, so you're not very, you're not going too much distance. No much distance traveled if you're a duck. So comfortability might be in their favor when Pac-12 conference play starts. Pelk on first with the walk. Chopped foul by Sheehan. John Sheehan still looking for his first base hit of the season. He is 0 for 18. Had a sack bunt in the second. Struck out in the fourth. Popped out in foul territory to the catcher in the seventh. Strike two. Neville on deck. Yeah, the Ducks sticking close to home after coming back from Arizona. That one just missed outside, one and two. Part of that, that Pac-12 schedule, I mean, they're giving you, after Arizona State, they're giving you home Pac-12 series against California, then Arizona. And then you got the week off, and they're playing four against Seattle at home. And yeah. they head down to UCLA in April, USC at home. They got at Stanford, at Oregon State, Utah at Washington, and finish off Pac-12, Washington State. Ripped into center field, but right at the center fielder. Betcher, two down. Maybe the best hit ball by Sheehan on the season. Lines out to center field and up to Cooper Neville to keep things going. Neville. 0 for 3, pop out in foul territory to the third baseman. Ground out to the pitcher, ground out to the second baseman. One away. Pelk takes his lead, playing behind him. Neville swinging a miss. Neville still looking for his first base hit as a lope. Sanders got his last inning, maybe. Neville can get his first base hit as a lope and flip the lineup and get Sanders up again. Up high, one and one. Yeah, especially here. Getting a, a hit at home with the people still here cheering for you. Popped it up. Not going to get it here. Cooney waves everybody off, makes the grab, and that is the ball game. 13 runs on 21 hits, no errors, and seven left on for the Ducks. Five runs, nine hits, one air, and three left on for the Lopes. A very inauspicious two games for GCU against the Ducks. Well, a stinger is what you might say for your, for your Lopes here, but all smiles if you are an Oregon Ducks player. Everybody getting some action. Everybody contributing to two great wins here on the road. They'll stick in Arizona, and they're... They're good in Arizona, Michael, so we'll see if they can continue that over at ASU. Yeah, they like playing here. I mean, it should be six straight, their last six games in Arizona. 
Final score in this one, 13-5. Lopes drop under 500 for the year, 6-7 and seven on the season. The Ducks go to 9-3, and three, both entering conference play. The Lopes at Stephen F. Austin. Check out the Lopes schedule page to watch that series on ESPN+. Plus. The Ducks against Arizona State. Thanks so much for joining us for our whole crew here. Travis Fleming, producer, director, and my partner in crime up here, Jack Dixon. Lopes drop this one. Head on the road. Be back next time at Brazel on the 15th. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great week. We'll catch you next time from Brazel. I'm Michael Sarah, and human skin is my passion, which is why I developed this. Sarah V. My cream. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Sarah V. Developed with Michael Sarah. You like? <laughs> There's its perfect crossover opportunity. I'm partnering with SoFi because they care about making your money work for your ambitions. Recognize a generational player. Join the official bank of the NBA. So far, get your money right. Something's not right. Guaranteed fresh meat and berries at this lower price? It's gotta be a mistake. She's on to us. Breathe. Dad, can I? Playgirl. Don't look back, don't look back, don't look back, don't look back. Dad, you look back! We've been made. Dad, the prices are always this low. Get in the car! At Aldi, everything we don't do is for you. Like, we don't make you choose between fresh and affordable. Let's go! It's an Aldi thing. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. At Quick Trip, there's a world of refreshing possibilities at your fingertips. Fountain. Fresh brewed or frozen? The only question is, what'll you pour first? QT, more than a gas station. Gentlemen, are you ready to learn the ways of the Dragon Warrior? Dragon Warrior? <laughs> Pass through the boards! Yes! Or Skadoosh! 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 So, we must train our minds. Breathe in. Breathe out. Mm. Where'd she go? Live... Live sports. ESPN Plus Originals. The exclusive...